reporting on spiritual trends in post-truth society. Welcome to Spirituality Today with your hosts, Laura Maxwell and Dana Emanuel. Welcome to Spirituality Today on this, the 27th of August, 2018. This is the very first episode of this show with me, Laura Maxwell, and my co-host, Dana Emanuel. Hey, Dana, how are you doing? Hi, Laura, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good, thanks. And, you know, I'm excited about this. This is our brand new show. Yes, it is. I'm really excited to be back. Last time I was your guest, and this time I get to co-host with you. What a blessing. Yeah, uh, and some folks might remember you from my last show, The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell. It aired on Eternal Radio for three years, and absolutely, you made it you know, really special, Dana, because you were on for the last four episodes, and that was just such a treat. Oh, thank you. It was a treat for me as well. <laughs> and, you know, folks listening in will have a, a wide variety of spiritual beliefs um, and we want to emphasize from the very outset that we don't wish to insult anyone in any way. You know, it's just not our style um, and we do just politely and kindly ask for you guys listening in to, to keep an open mind while you listen to these shows. Um uh, this show in particular is, is very special, and we've got very special guests to be on it with us. And, you know, Dana and I can actually relate so much to the guests we'll have on today's show. Um, I'll just give a little of our background before we introduce the guests. Dana was the leader of a paranormal investigation team that worked across Florida. Since retiring from that, she now shares inside information from her experiences on radio shows, YouTube channels, and so on. My mother and I were also involved in the New Age and spiritualism, and tragically, she committed suicide. I've since shared on TV and radio worldwide, and in, uh, in books and magazines, my story has been featured. So, uh, you know, Dana and I are, are so honoured to help people worldwide who have experienced these types of things. And along with, with countless others, we've experienced a side of the paranormal that not many people uh, are aware of and not many people talk about. So, today we'll be speaking with Laura and Gary, the brother and sister of the late Mark Constantino. You know, Dana and I are so honoured they chose this show to share their story for the very first time. Laura has been asked to share on many radio shows since Mark and Debbie's deaths three years ago. And Dana, you know, you and I, we just feel strongly that this is Laura's destiny um, to share this. Yes, yes, I, I do too. I really do. I think this is, gonna, this is her, uh, her calling. Yep, yep. And, and especially just the fact that, you know, um, folks have been asking her for the last three years. Um, and for folks who don't know um, about this, but many listeners, I think, will remember the, the famous ghost hunting couple, Mark and Debbie Constantino, and they appeared on the famous show uh, Ghost Ad Adventures with Zach Baggins and team. It's been televised worldwide, and it's even on our shows, our channels here in Scotland. The very tragic deaths of the Constantinos sent total shockwaves through all of the fans of that show, and indeed the whole paranormal community. The harrowing details of their deaths were widely reported by the media, and to this day, people still discuss it on talk shows and, sh and so on. Um, we're going to really be very sensitive and delicate, obviously, today as we discuss this. So let's go right over to our, our guest, Laura C., and welcome her to the show. Hey, Laura, how are you? I'm Great. I'm great. Thank you so much, Laura and Dana, for um, having me and Gary on the show. It means a lot to us, and 
I'm finally going to get our story out, and mm-hmm. it just um, it's just perfect. I, I I I actually thank you so much for doing this for us. Well, you know, we thank you so much. We thank both of you for your courage in doing this. It's not an easy thing to do, um, and, and we're honoured that, that you're doing it with us. And, and you know, Dana, uh, sorry, Laura, um, you actually made, you know, a 24-hour drive to get to Gary's to do this show. And I think that just shows, and obviously you're just going to get a flight home as well. It, you know, it really shows how important this is to you. Yes. Um, it is. It's, yeah. defi- it's definitely important. Mm-hmm. And, and a um, 24-hour journey, my goodness. I mean, <laughs> us here in Scotland, you know, we feel quite impressed if we have to drive down through Scotland to England to get to <laughs> London, and that only takes eight hours, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, hey, hey, Gary, I can hear you there. Welcome to the show. Um, and how are you doing today? I'm doing fine today. How are you? I'm doing fine too, and it must be lovely for you getting a visit from your sister. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, it must be um, lovely to to see her again. It, it always is lovely to see her again. That's awesome. And hey, listen, have you guys spoken to a Scot before? Scottish person? Oh no, 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 no. No, I, w- I, w- I wouldn't advise it personally, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? You know, well, well, you know the Scots. I mean, Dana talks to me, but uh, she kind of can't help it, you know. Um, oh, the English and the Irish and the Welsh are okay, but the Scots, I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's no. unfair, Gary, you know. We just get this reputation. People think we're all running around with kilts on and swinging haggises <laughs> over our heads, you know. <laughs> you forgot the well, that's right. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> you but, but don't tell anybody. But we, we do actually no, do I that. Won't. But we, you know, we only do it at the weekends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. That's funny. So, um, really, let's just just jump in, guys, and. Um, basically, you know, the first question that we want to ask is, can you begin sharing a little about about your childhood, what it was like growing up with your brothers and sisters? Well, I came from a um, very Catholic family, um, one of seven children. Um, Mom and dad were very religious, uh, always attended daily masses all the time, always took us children with them. And um, Mark, as I remember him, he was an altar boy. He went to Catholic school with me. We were four-year age difference apart. And he was always a good person. Yes. A very good person. And... um, I'm trying to think of more information I could give you about him. He he mm-hmm. was just he was just a very good guy, a very good guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the, the the family he came from, um, we came from a well, um, backgrounded family. Um, we we had high standards in the family, and you know he 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 just. Was was always there too when you needed him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Always, when, whenever you needed him, he was there for you. Yeah. And it's yeah. It's, it, yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, we all went to Catholic school. That meant a lot to our parents. And you know, Mark being an altar boy, and just us. You know, we had a very close knit family. We were very loving. You know, we always would say, "Mom, Dad, we love you." Before we would go to night, at, you know, go to sleep at night, or if we ever called, we would say, Mom, I love you. We would never end a conversation without I love you, ever, in our mm-hmm. family. So we And you had... know what, what, what strikes me, sorry, what, what strikes me from the family photographs you sent me was, you know, you can see that, you can see the love and you can see the, the unity there. It was lovely looking at your family yes. photos. Yes, and they were all like that. And um, mm-hmm. the few that I was man- I managed to send you of us growing up, 
Um, there was only quite a few because actually I should have brought more with me to my trip to Florida, but I didn't think about it. Mm-hmm. But he he yeah. was just what? he he was a big teddy bear, Mark. Just a big teddy bear. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and, and I think as as the program goes on, we, we'll share what we feel really happened. Um, you know, at, at the end. Um, so now I want to ask you. You know, we often discover that that paranormal activity tends to run in families. Did any of your close family or ancestors ever dabble in the occult or, or, you know, play Ouija boards, go ghost ghost hunting, tarot cards, anything like that? No. Yeah, I I I have to uh, second that. We really Mm -hmm. racked our heads on this and going back as far as we can think of all of our relatives. Um, none of us ever did anything except I remember when I was young, you know, the, the I mean, the Ouija board you could buy in a store, a, a toy store. Yeah. Yeah. And I never thought, you know, that, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I'm mean, i talking about being very young, you know, mm-hmm. 12, mm-hmm. 13, 14, whatever. And yeah, that I do. It was just a, that it was just a toy game. Yes. And I did, we did play on that once in a while. And I remember my mom did take me to a couple mediums. Um, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, over the years, but it was nothing that I really gave it much thought to because sure, I never believed. I really never believed in it. It was just you know, especially the Ouija board. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is a, this is a joke. This is just a yeah. joke. Yeah, yeah. And um, I could what, never get. I, I, it. I'm sorry. I could never get that thing to move anyway. So it was uh-huh. a little board in the middle. So I'm like, this, this, yeah. is, this, this is a joke. But, but you did, what we find is, um, but you did you know, try, you know, yep. like, like in a playful way, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's all it would be. That's. I mean, we weren't. Yeah, looking. it would never be to look to contact uh, no. anyone deceased or anything no. like that right. of that oh, nature. Okay. Okay. No. What we find is that folks, you know, even if they do things, um, not really believe in it, or even if they do something, even just once, that in actual fact. Although the person might not realize it, what happens is it's like a spiritual door has opened in their life um, to the spirit world and that that can later draw them back into or give them that interest to be drawn back in. Not always, but um, sometimes we find that. So it's interesting that there is that uh, little bit of of history there. Um, So moving on, you know, after Mark and Debbie's deaths, did either of you experience anything paranormal happen then? Well, I never experienced anything that Laura has experienced. Um, The only thing I experienced when we came back from our trip from Virginia was um, I was in the, the kitchen one night in my kitchen, I was leaning against the stove and there was a, um, uh, I had a light over my head in the kitchen and what happened was I was talking to Laura on the phone and the light went out. No one else was home but me. The light went out, totally out. So I walked around the side to hit the switch to turn it off. And the switch was down, like somebody had turned the switch off by hand. There was no one else in the house with me but me. So that was the only strangest thing I had since I came back Sure. uh, of something like that. But nothing to the extent Mm -hmm. of what Laura and her daughter um, has gone through. What was your response when that happened? You didn't get much... Of a thought, I didn't, you know. No, I, I really uh, didn't give it much of a thought, you know, yeah. because I never had any problems. I mean, we took this Virginia trip out there to see what my brother was passionate about. Yeah. We wanted to see what it what what he what he loved about the job. Yeah. And when we came back, um, Laura started asking me immediately about things that were. Um, happening uh, with her daughter and herself, and she wanted to know from me if I was experiencing any um, types of things like that. And I said to her, no. I said, I have not experienced anything like that. 
Yeah, but you weren't. Mm-hmm. You probably weren't really looking for it, and also by your not responding to it may have been why it didn't continue. You know, because <laughs> I th- I find that when people give it attention and, and they're actually looking to maybe contact that person on the other side or you know that has passed away. Uh, that that's when the uh, the activity will continue and even you know escalate. Right. No, no, I, I never put well, that it, direction. Yeah, I, I think as well, Gary. You mentioned that you know, um, we also felt that it didn't escalate with you because you just weren't really interested in going that way anyhow. Yeah. Um, so it's as if it's almost as if the the spirits felt. Gary's that not interested, but but Laura um, was beginning to get a bit interested, so it's as if they kind of went to her instead, yeah. as it were. So so mm-hmm. Laura, um, yeah, please please share, you know, about the the, the Virginia trip. Well, and, I just yep. want to I just want to go one step um, further. I mean, just be uh, one step before that is mm-hmm. um, nothing happened to us. Um, as far as anything paranormal, and even to Mark, until he met Debbie here in New Jersey. Mark Mm -hmm. came from, like I said, a loving family. We were very close. And Mark used to hang out at a bar called Churchill, I think the name of it was, and Debbie was a bartender. And Debbie was a bartender. And that's where they met, and they started to go out. And I remember the first time I was at my mom's house, I already, I was the first one to leave the house. I had two children at the time. And I would just like to go down by my mom's to hear some adult conversation, you know. You're with two little kids all day. You go crazy. And Mm -hmm. um, I remember Debbie and Mark walking in, and he introduced her. And that was the first time I had ever met her. And that was the last time I ever met her. And I don't know whether it was. She just did not like our family because of the closeness we had. Now, Debbie, I remember Mark telling me that Debbie grew up on a street that her her backyard was backed up to a cemetery, and that when she was about five or six years old, that that was when she first had her first experience encounter with a spirit or an entity wow. in her bedroom, and that mm-hmm. sparked her interest. Mm-hmm. And she did come from an abusive family. Her father was an alcoholic, yeah. and she was an only child. And but Mark, absolutely nothing until he met Debbie. Mm-hmm. Wow. He wasn't he didn't play around with the Ouija oh. board that, that you no. mentioned earlier. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that, as we know that's what happens. It's a, a loved one that brings us into our husband or wife or, or whatever and yep, it's it's the way it goes, you know. But yeah, tell us um a little bit about that, you know, why did you go to, to Virginia? Why did you want to go to that? paranormal investigation this was just three weeks after mark's death is that right yes mark died on september 22nd 2015 and Mm -hmm. uh the event was october three weeks later like around the 20th of Mm -hmm. october something like that it was before halloween and it actually it was my idea i just always wanted to know what Mark was passionate about because every time I would watch Ghost Adventures, of course, all the nieces and nephews, and once they knew Mark was on TV, they were, you know, we have to watch this. But every time I watched it and I would look at my brother on TV and I'd be saying to myself, Mark, how did you get yourself into this stuff? Like, this is not new. But Mm -hmm. But the whole time, Laura and Dana, I really thought it was all make believe. I truly did not understand anything about the afterlife. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that that's why I just it just I don't know. That's the that's that's the thing with me is I never I never just gave it a second thought. I was like this is Mark's got to be making this stuff up. Until mm-hmm. yeah. I decided to go to Virginia and I found a close investigation that actually Mark and Debbie were supposed to attend. And you asked, and, I, and you asked Gary. Gary went with you. You said, "Yes, I did accompany her." Okay. And and, and I didn't really <laughs> want to go. Yeah. Um, so, I begged him. So yeah. it was Gary and your daughter, right, Samantha? Yes. Okay. Yes, correct. And I didn't know at the time, but Gary just told me recently that Sam had called him 
and said that she really didn't want to go. And I did not know that. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I did not, I didn't force him. She just said, Mom, you know, I'm, I'll take the ride with you. I'll go out, you know. Yeah. And I thought it was going to be, you know, we'll just go, you know, look at what happens and come home. And our curiosity, our curiosity, our curiosity would have been satisfied at that point. Yeah. But unfortunately, mm-hmm. that's when our hell began. Uh, did she show interest in it when he was on, like you said that sometimes whenever Mark and them was on TV, when their uh, investigations was featured, did Sam ever want to watch his, the episodes? And uh, you didn't see like any interest that way with her at that time, yes. did you? I did, Dana. She um, she she taped the Ghost Adventure shows. She okay. watched them constantly. Okay, okay. Constantly. Mm-hmm. Yes, she did. Okay. So, you know, that, that spiritual door was actually already opened in her life, even though she might yeah. not have experienced anything in the house herself, you know, it's like her spirit had already become open to yeah. such things, even by something simple like just watching those TV programs. Yes. So, so you know, tell us then um, what happened Okay, well, the place we went to, um, um, when I looked it up, it was um, a historical site, uh, historical site in Chester, Virginia, and it was known for its haunted activity. So after we all went, um, well, actually, after we finished our investigation, it was like three in the morning, and and you you start from there, Gar. And we were we had taken a little break, and they had a little um, little hall set up. Uh, for us to sit down and have something to eat. And we were having something to eat, and I'll never forget it. Um, One of the paranormal investigators came in um, and said, they knelt down by our table and said, if you can please um, come outside, we want you to listen to something that we have made contact with your brother. Oh, wow. And uh, we all just were beside ourselves with this. And yeah. we immediately dropped everything we were reading and we went out. Sure. And, and there was a gentleman out there. Uh, Founder of oh. that group. Of that group, okay. our group we were in, right. Yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah. One more question just before he finishes. When we signed up for this group and he knew who we were and I told him, he said to us, okay, I'm going to, you know, you don't have to pay. We're going to put you in but we're not going to say you're Constantino's. He had to give us a separate last name. Yeah. He did oh, okay. not want any of the people mm-hmm. there knowing who we were. That yeah. soon sure. after we were died. Oh, sure. okay. okay. That, that was, he was trying to protect your, yeah. protect yeah. your that was smart. privacy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So go on. So, what, so when, what ended up happening is we all went outside, and he had one of these devices in his hand, the EVPs. Yeah. Where, where they catch noises and different voices. Recorder. And he said to me, Laura and Sam, he said, I want you to get real close to me. And he says, I want you to listen to this and tell me if you think it's your brother's voice. And he played this thing back. And sure enough, I, I thought it was my brother's voice, one million percent sure. We look, we all okay. looked at each other. We had so, tears in our eyes, and we were like, mm-hmm. yes, that's definitely Mark's voice. Wow. That's, that's when I started becoming a believer. But until then, I was still skeptical about this whole trip. I yeah. still did sure. not believe. Yeah. And... You know, now that time has went on and and hearing more about the paranormal activity, how they come across in different ways and how they can disguise themselves, um, you know, I'm not really sure if that was his voice. I mean, as as much as I'm a million percent sure, but now I hear uh, other things, how they can disguise themselves and voice and appearance and different things. Mm -hmm. You know, and they can um, mimic so well too. Like I said, they can they can mimic the voices, the appearance, smells of those that we love and have lost. Right. You know, and they do that to gain our gain our trust. You know, um, because they want us to believe them. You know that um, that first off that they are still here with us. You know, because the Bible says otherwise. You know, but um, 
and they they feel like it's almost like you know going to a psychic and the psychic gives really good accurate information and it and it r- totally convinces that person wow this has to be them because it's accurate information how would they right. know this but they don't realize right. these demonic spirits around us all the time trying to tempt us mm-hmm. they watch us you know uh they even report things to god you know yeah, because it's in the scriptures you know like in job um but but the whole thing is once they uh convince us okay well that's them usually the person will go deeper into you know trying to communicate with them and and the door just keeps getting open wider and wider you know and they're vulnerable and don't even realize you know what can happen and i think as well you know um Dana's obviously an ex-ghost hunter, so she's speaking from experience, and I'm an ex-spiritualist. And, you know, um, I also found that, that, that a lot of my medium and psychic friends would say that, you know, sometimes a mischievous evil spirit does get in, and it will impersonate your dead loved ones. It's not actually them. It's impersonating right. them um, and sounds so much like them. Yeah. So, you know, eventually we start to wonder, well, maybe they're all just demons then, yeah. impersonating the so-called dead, and yeah. basically through various things, that's um, what Dana and I eventually discovered, as a whole lot of other ghost hunters do yeah. discover some of them. Uh, you know, and, and I remember even going to a house a couple of years ago um, because a woman said there was entities in her house that were impersonating um people who were alive, you know, her relatives yeah. who were in the next room, these entities were turning up. So, yeah, you know, we, we went there and, and cast them out. But, yes, as Dana says, and I know for a lot of folks listening into this, they'll be saying that's absolute nonsense, complete and utter nonsense. Um, you know, the Bible isn't real. Jesus Christ isn't real. Um, so it might be worth me kind of us saying at this point, I used to think that too. Yeah, so right. did Dana. Yes. Um, but, when we started going through stuff where the paranormal was getting way out of control, um, we kind of did a little bit of research, etc. Dana can share a bit more uh, later with that. And, you know, I actually found out, for example, that historians have actually proved Jesus Christ really did live um, the life the Bible says. There is proof he actually did die on the cross, and there is proof that the resurrection was real. Yes. Um, there's historical records, there's scholars at top universities who prove this stuff. They've even done debates with the likes of Richard Dawkins and won the debate. So, you know, we discovered Jesus isn't just a reincarnation of previous gods, that that whole zeitgeist new age theory has been debunked, but that Jesus Christ really is the saviour, and that the stuff in the Bible that talks about these spirits and so on, the scriptures in there that describe it all, um, we actually discovered through personal experience is actually true. So I think it's kind of important to get that in there before folks uh, switch off. And, and right. most important, uh, the most compelling evidence, you know, that it's the truth is the power of his name. When we cast these spirits mm-hmm. out, I don't care if they're mimicking someone's dead mother. If you turn around and you go to cast that that spirit out, it leaves at the name of Jesus. So it always comes out that it is not that spirit of a dead person, you know. Mm-hmm. And like you said, Definitely. They, you know, they mimic. And even even the shows on TV, the Ghost of Adventures, a lot of the other shows um, will admit that they do sometimes mimic, you know, the dead. But they just fail to realize that they really mimic the dead all the time. Right. You know? That's the problem. Right. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sure. You know, and and as Dana says, Dana and I are now deliverance ministers, um, you know, which means that we do cast demons out in Jesus' name. And we know many other deliverance ministers. I know one guy who's been doing it for 50 years, and he said to me every single time he's been called to a house to... um, so-called deal with a you know a ghost every time he's challenged it and it has morphed it, it's you know the face of the the so-called dead gran or whatever has morphed away um and underneath the the true identity this demon um has showed its its true identity and he's then 
cast it out in Jesus' name. He said, not once has it ever proven to be an actual ghost. Amen. And again, that just kind of clarifies what the Bible says. Yes. Wow. So, yeah, Laura, you were going to say something there? Um, actually, I forgot what I was going to say. I have, you know, Laura, I have so much, there is so much on my mind in the past two years since Mark and my daughter died. They died 10 months apart from each other. And I still say to this day, if Mark never got involved with this supernatural, yes. crazy stuff, that yes. he and my daughter would still be alive. Yes. To death. Mm -hmm. I there is that. no yeah. death. I will yeah. say this to uh, my last breath. Yeah. I, yeah. I know this with all my heart. I know this. Yeah. It's the truth. And you and also I, said that the last time you saw you saw Samantha, for the last time you saw her, you actually felt that, that she looked as if something had taken her. over her. Yeah, it wasn't her, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something had taken, taken her over, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Yes, that, yeah. that was very, that was very, that I will never forget yeah. because um, there's so much that leads into that point. But Yeah, yeah. if you want to actually go ahead, I guess mm -hmm. with the investigation, um, mm -hmm. Gary was saying, you know, that they called you out and you heard the voice right. and everything. And then after that, you come home. And what was it that actually happened after that? Okay, the first thing that happened after that, and it was only, it was very quickly, maybe a couple weeks. My daughter was living alone for the first time in her life. She, uh, usually her, I raised her, her, she was a single parent, and she did the best she could. She, you know, she was getting no child support or whatever, and so when she came back from Hawaii, when Caden was a year old, I took her into the house, I got her back here, and I basically helped her with everything, helped her with every single thing. So she had no one, basically, but me. Me and her son were her life. Wow. And what happened was, after a couple of months, she decided to move out for a while, just to see if she could, you know, support herself on her own. But she had a very t hard time holding jobs. She was um, not letting any friends, and you know, she was, you know, getting away from her friends. Of, like you said, like, just trying not to be around anybody anymore, closing herself up, um, just breaking, not breaking that word. The word I'm trying to use Not is, being herself. Not being herself. She was depressed, mm -hmm. yeah. and she didn't want to be around people, and she just didn't would give any excuse. Didn't you say something about, uh, I don't know if she was diagnosed with it or not, but bipolar? Yes. Bipolar. She was, first, she was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Wow. Yep. Then and and I never knew I never knew at the time how much she was suffering and I feel bad at this point that I should have maybe understood more but I didn't know anything about the disease. Yeah. I just knew yeah. she constantly was tired, she couldn't get out of bed all day, she couldn't sleep at night. Yeah. She had no li she had no life. Yeah. And it was it was just really bad but what happened is after about 2 or 3 weeks of her coming home, she would call me up in the morning and say, "Mom, Something I'm waking up during the night and something is choking me in my wow. sleep. And oh. she would do this over and over. And finally, I said, Sam, maybe you better go to the doctors and get checked. Because that would be the last thing I would think of is that something was attached to us when we left Virginia. Yeah. And sure enough, one night she woke up during the night and she felt like she was being choked. And she, my daughter always liked to sleep in the dark, no nightlight or anything. And she happened to grab her cell phone that was on her little bedside table. Yeah. And in the dark, she started to, like, click pictures around her room. Yeah. The next morning, she called me and said, Mom, you've got to come over and see what I caught on my phone. So oh, after wow. work, I went over, and when I looked at her phone, I was like, you have to be kidding me. <laughs> you have to wow. be kidding me. And I sent it right to my priest uh, because I worked for a priest at the time. Yeah. And he dabbled in the um, supernatural, and he has his own page on Facebook. It's called The Catholic Church and the Paranormal. And he um, he just, you know, anything, because I didn't know who to go to. And with this being, with it choking her um, yeah. in the picture that she took, I showed him. He said, send it to me right away. And that's what he sent to me. He said to me, it is called... 
a shadow person. And the picture of it was this shadow person in the dark yeah. standing at the bottom of her bed facing her in the dark. Very tall, like six feet tall. Yeah, very, very big. Wow. But the figure of a shadow person. Yeah. It was, it was just another up. way they morphed themselves. You know, it's it was a demonic spirit, but it's just the, one of the ways that they, you know, uh, appear. They come across. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It's just and, like, you know, um, I, I sometimes share with folks how um, we've discovered as well that many people, whether the entity um, masquerades as a ghost or a shadow person or even looks like a fairy or an alien or anything like that, no matter what type of entity, spirit guide even, no matter what type of entity it pretends to be when challenged at the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to show its true identity, it is always um, showing up like a demon. And it's exactly what, you know, the Bible does explain happens with, with people yeah. involved in, in uh, spiritualism, witchcraft and so on. In fact, in, in 2 Corinthians 11.14 it says, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as if an angel of light. So even Satan himself turns up and pretends to be different things. He can morph his, um, you know, morph his appearance. My mum was a spiritualist medium and she thought one night she saw Lucifer appear in the room and she thought this was a good oh, thing because wow. she believed Lucifer was an angel of light. But oh, wow. um, he, he, he actually morphed into a, a hideous, horrible demon and, you know, tried to kill her, choked her just like Sam experienced uh, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, as Dana says, they can masquerade as anything. Yeah. Wow. Well, let me tell you some of the other things that started to happen after that. Well, as time mm -hmm. went on, she became more depressed and more withdrawn. And then, like, one night she called me and Kate and she was taking his clothes off to put his pajamas on. He was only seven at the time. And she said, Mom, his back, she actually sent me a picture. His back was full of scratches, oh, like just wow. long claw mark scratches on his back. Because he was saying, oh. Mom, my back's hurting. My back's hurting. Oh, wow. And that, I mean, there was no way anybody could have done that to him. Yeah, yeah, And then right. one, one day she was sitting on her deck having a cigarette, and she could see Caden from, you know, in his room playing his video games. And she was having a cigarette, and all of a sudden, on the deck, she heard loud pounding on her walls. Just bang, bang, bang. And oh, wow. she ran in the house right away, and as she was running toward Caden, Caden's running toward her. And she said, Caden, where did that come from? And he said, Mom, it came from your room. It came oh, from wow. your Because their walls were backed up to each other. Yeah. So with that, she went downstairs to ask her neighbor under her if they heard anything. And they did not hear a thing. Wow. It was just so trying was, to scare her yes. and him. Yes. So, you know, of course, we called Father again because he was yeah. the one. He was my go-to whenever anything I couldn't yeah. explain happened. Right, right. And then after that, um, what else happened? Um, oh, yeah, the, another time, because um, I have a cleaning business. So my daughter wasn't the cleanest person. So she would always say, Mom, come over and help me clean my house. And I was like, okay. So I went over one day, and I'm cleaning her living room and her kitchen, and I was fine, you know. And then I went into her bedroom to start making her bed, and I was in there a matter of 30 seconds the most. And I remember starting to make her bed, and Sam came in to the other side of the bed, and she looked at me, and she, she knew right away something was wrong. She goes, Mom, what's the matter? And I said, Sam, something's wrong with me. I all of a sudden, and I was not sick, all of a sudden I... I a sickness came over me, a nausea, a vo I wanted to vomit. Yeah. My head yeah. just started to pound and spin. And wow. I said, Gee, I, I feel like I'm going to throw up. It just something made me so yes. sick. Yes. She, she mm -hmm. looked at me and she said, Mom, get out of my room right now. Mm -hmm. And he called my priest and he said to me, don't go back in her room. It doesn't want you there. It does not want you in her room. Huh. It was making me sick. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was fine cleaning in every other room. Every other room. Yeah. Now, now, Laura, tell her about the time she was sitting on the couch in the middle of the afternoon watching TV. Yeah, th this is um, this is one of the big ones. But 
before I get to that, I'm, I think I mentioned this to Dana once yeah. about my daughter was delivering pizzas that night. And I got a call at about 11 o'clock from her boss saying, you've got to come pick Sam up. She was in a car accident. I went, drove to pick her up. It was about 20 minutes from my house. And I got to her, and she was hysterical. And I said, what happened? And she said, Mom, this shadow person shot out in front of me oh, wow. as, I, oh. as I was coming up a driveway to deliver pizza, and it caused her to, to go into swerve. something, swerve into something. I can't remember now what it was. Oh, no. And she couldn't drive. She was just too shaken. So now listen to this. I get her in my truck, and I just had a small pickup truck with a front cab. I got her in my truck. I hadn't even turned the ignition on when we heard three claps. Wow. Between the two of us in our seats. Oh, my goodness. Wow. We looked at each other, and I was my face turned white, and I'm like, oh, my God, did we just hear these claps? And right. mom, and she, she was like, Mom, I know what it is. It's, it's mimicking. It's telling me, ha, 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 look what I just made you do. Yeah. Like, it was, mm-hmm. it was a joke to this entity yeah. Yeah. that he could, he could have killed her. Yes. And he was joking around. And then wow. another time, before I'm going to get to the, lab, the the more serious part at the very end, but another time she was in my house washing clothes in my basement, and she was on the phone with her friend. And she said, Mom, hold my phone and talk to Jason. I just want to put clothes in the wash, whatever. And we started talking, and all of a sudden I hear this deep growl come across the phone. <gasps> Oh. And I got quiet. This guy, Jason, got quiet. Oh. And then all of a sudden, Jason said, did you just hear that? And I said, yes. And please tell me, Jason, it came from your side of the phone. And he said, I'm sorry, Laura, but it came from yours. Oh. It came from my side of the phone. Uh, and this was, not, this was Sam's phone I was on. Yeah. Without, I gave him. I'm sorry, go ahead. Without... Well, I just want to ask one question. Is, isn't is that the one person that was uh, sort of like a medium or something? Yes. yes okay. Was. Okay. I just want to make sure. Oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't make mm-hmm. that connection before. And yeah, also, Jason he, did reading some things for people. Yeah. 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 And, he, and he was also an atheist. I didn't realize that at the, first, at the, the very beginning, whether that makes a difference or not. I don't know. But I yeah. never picked up my daughter's phone from that point on. And then toward the end, when it really started um, trying to really harm her, she um, called me one day. Kaden was in school, and she was delivering pizzas, so she was working at night. And she said, Mom, I was sitting on my couch. It was right after, um, right after uh, Christmas. Her Christmas tree was still up. And she said she was sitting on her, her couch, and... The couch was not backed up to a wall, so it was, you know, there was nothing behind it. It was backed up to her dining room. And she said all of a sudden, like, it was like a linebacker just banged into the back of her chair. And she fell forward. it knocked her completely off the couch. The force of, the, of, of that knocked her off the couch. Oh, my goodness. And, and after that happened, she was trying not to get scared because she knew what it was. Yeah. And she sat mm-hmm. back down on the couch. And then she said, out of the corner of her eye, she saw something, not of this world, crawling on oh. all fours. Oh, and it wow. Was, it was okay. coming from her bedroom, and it crawled into the living room, and she had a coffee mm-hmm. table in front of her couch. It went to the front of the coffee table, and as it got right in front of her, it stopped, looked and it turned and looked, and looked at her directly. And oh, when it oh. looked at her, it morphed into a, a, a standing a, position. A, yeah, it just stood up. And oh. she said she was literally frozen. She yeah. said it had horns. It had red eyes. It had long, like, arms that were, like, Gumby-like arms, she yeah. described it, like, like arms that touched the ground. Wow. Um, and it was about seven feet tall. And this but was- she said... I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes. And this no. was within that three weeks after the investigation? No, now we're going on to more two months later because when all this started to happen, I went to my priest and I said, Father, can you help? And oh, my okay. daughter had lost my daughter had lost her faith after her best friend. I told you, Dana, I don't yeah. know if Laura if I told you, 
he was in a car accident and he got pinned up between two trees and he actually, his gas tank caught fire, he burned to death. And this was my daughter's best friend from kindergarten oh on up. And she, and she blamed God, I, which, yeah. which might have been a natural reaction. You know, you're so mad when something yeah. like that happens. Yeah. Yeah. 31. And she lost her faith after that. Oh, that is so, so sad. Right. So father said to me, I cannot come in to her apartment until she gets her faith back because I'm afraid to come in there. And he had her go into church and go into confession and trying to get strong enough before he entered her apartment with another priest. Did he counsel her? He talked to her, and then he also had her speak to another couple. Um, I think their name was Kenneth and Farrah Deal. Oh, they those were, those were uh, more investigators, though, wasn't it? No, they're on the Christian. They're into the Christian side of the paranormal they have a podcast also and yeah. but father would always go to them and say what do i do this is going on now and and they finally said you can't wait any longer this is physically now trying to hurt her you can't wait wow you can't, wow. Wait. You can't wait yeah so yeah. that's when father um managed to get involved and that's when this was now in january maybe this is in january of the following year so this has been going on since november yeah oh wow November, and um, so they, he had come in with a priest, we had to leave the house, and he cleansed it, he came in in full garb, you know, with his Bibles, and all the stuff they come in with, holy, holy water, everything, plus oh, holy wow. water, and he said to me that when he did enter her bedroom, he heard the growl, he heard a growl, mm -hmm. going into the bedroom, and he thought hopefully that was going to work, well, it didn't work, mm -mm. no, it didn't. It did not work wow. because she still um, she still had things that were happening to her. But on top of this, as this was happening to her at her apartment, things were showing itself to me. I one day, it was probably in January. I had I was watching TV at night in my bedroom, and I always drink tea in the fall and the winter. And I had a little white night light. Well, not light. It's a lamp. A little lamp on my table. I've had for years. And around my lamp, it's a white shade. And I've always had, when my son made his confirmation, the bishop put around the girls and guys' necks um, a leather strap with a wooden cross. That's what he put around them after they were confirmed. It's confirmation. And I always had it for years now hanging up over my lamp. So it hangs. It looked, real, it looked beautiful there. Yeah. Well, I go, I go downstairs. I make my cup of tea. I was gone two minutes the most, Laura. And I walk back in my room, mm -hmm. and Dana, I showed you this picture. Oh, yes. Mm -mm. My, the cross on this lamp was inverted. It was. Mm -hmm. It was flipped upside down. And uh, there and was no one else in my house. Oh, it was no, yeah. There was no one else in my house. There was no one else in my house. Yeah. And yeah. I, I called my priest right away. And, you know, because I had my faith then. I, was, I, was, I did. I really had my faith in God. Nothing could shake it. And it was trying to scare me. And Father just said, slowly turn it back the way it was. And he told me to say a prayer. And I did. And I went to bed that night. I was a little uneasy, but I wasn't going to let it really scare me. And other than that, I know, what else did I experience? I'm trying to think. I know it was the growl on the phone. I experienced that. Uh, what else did I experience? Um, the clapping in the car. Mm-hmm. And that was probably about the three things that I experienced and I saw myself. And yeah. that's when I said to that, myself, this is really for real. This is really seriously for real. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, and you know, um, Dana and I have experienced a lot of stuff like that um, when, when we were into ghosts. And, you know, it's absolutely terrifying. I can remember being paralyzed and being choked in my bed. Um, my mother was a spiritualist medium, she was attacked by spirits, she was actually um, raped by spirits too, I know not oh, everyone wow. believes that, but, but oh, she wow. was, um, I was assaulted by them, I was sexually assaulted by them, you know, so these are not, um, they're not the, the friendly ghosts um, that, that we think we are, and they're not just the 
the demons that, that paranormal investigators describe them as because sometimes a, a spirit would morph as a ghost and then morph into a demon. You know, they would switch back and forwards and morph. Mm. <laughs> so again, you know, as I said before, it, it just shows you that the Bible's right. These demons can impersonate anything, even dead ghosts. And of course, the Bible does actually say that when someone dies, they actually cannot come back as a ghost. It's impossible to come back yeah. as a ghost. Um, they actually stay in heaven or hell. So it's actually impossible anyway to come back as a ghost. Um, and, you know, talking about morphing and, and into different things and all of that, Laura, you also mentioned someone, obviously you're not going to tell us the, the guy's name because he's a personal friend, but he um, was affected by the paranormal too. And one day he phoned you and, and um, he started... He just wasn't himself, the things he was saying to you. Oh, that was really crazy. It, yeah. it yes. changed his behavior, too, basically so, changed his behavior. Now, but this was after Sam had passed away. Yeah. This had happened. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, I mean, became you don't, friends. You don't have to say no names or anything, you know. No. no. Just, or, um, you know. I became friends with him after Mark died. We were just bombarded with paranormal people that wanted uh, that were sending us friend requests because they saw the name Constantino and I have to be honest a lot of them are such beautiful kind just sweet people yes totally and absolutely I really totally agree with you Dana and I oh, totally yes. agree with you because we were into that field ourselves you know yeah. for a, yep. a long time in our life we were both into that field ourselves so right. we know from experience they are totally lovely people definitely they are they yeah. definitely are. Yes. But what but what happened was he was in his 30s, so he was, he was close to my daughter's age. And he had a rough life. He was sick a lot. And so we became very close. Because when I, when I had my first pregnancy, I had three boys. I had triplets that passed away on me. And after oh. that, you know, I did oh, have two sons. I did have two sons and a daughter. But I always say to him, you know, Jason, I just clicked with him. And I would always say, I love you. You could be my, my third son. And, you know, he called me mama. Like, it was just, he was from Virginia. And he was, you know, very, very sweet. Uh, southern. Yes, very yeah. sweet. That's the word I want to use. Yeah. And, then one, and then one night, he called me. Or I called him because there was something on TV that just freaked me out. I can't remember now what it was. And we started talking. And he said to me, oh, because I had put a picture of myself on Facebook. Uh, from 20 years ago when I had a really good shape back then. And I had a really nice dress on. It was at my son's confirmation or communion. And I had really uh, tall heels on, black stockings. And I remember him saying to me, you know, I've been looking at that picture of yours. And he said, you know, I'm trying to figure out, you know, like all about how the shoes tied around your leg. And, I mean, he was just saying the craziest things to me. Yeah. And then yeah. he was more or less, you know, saying, you know, what are you, what are you wearing? I said, in my flannel pajamas, I'm in bed. I was like, what's the matter with you? Yeah. And he, he just was like, all of a sudden, he just got real quiet. And he started to ask me these very inappropriate yeah. questions and appropriate statements. You know, wow. Just, wow. I, even to go into them right now would be very embarrassing for yeah. both of us. Yeah. Yeah. And please, he just don't. Yeah. Okay. And he said to me, "I can't get you off my mind." And he's and then I was trying to change his mind of, and this is not you. Please, yeah. please. Mm -hmm. You're scary. You're scaring me. I wanted to hang up. Yeah. And I finally hung up, and he called me the next day, and he was crying to me, apologizing. Oh, he said, oh, "Laura, I, I was talking to you. Something." came over me. Mm. Something I can't explain. It's never happened to me before. It yes. came over me. And I have never been, I don't think of you like that. I think of you as my mother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he was, he was so embarrassed yes. over it. He was crying to me. And I said, now see, that's another um, situation where that was not him. Because he was involved in the paranormal, you know, he had opened that spiritual door to spirits and allowed, allowing them that invitation to come yeah. into his life. And therefore, sometimes, you know, yes. without him knowing it, they could be taken over. Um, but I would um, even go so far as to say folks who are involved in that kind of stuff, like Dana and I used to be, you know, 
whilst we were involved in that, we didn't realise it, but in actual fact, we were already possessed yeah. and taken over by spirits. Not only when, for example, we, you know, suddenly started speaking like a, like someone else or whatever, uh, like they sometimes do, but all of the time because we had opened that door, you know, that the Bible warns not to open. And, yeah. you know, I think Dana's even got some examples of that what you're talking about being taken over um, that, that, you, that you could share as well from the, the ghost hunting show. But as I say, I want to emphasize that just because a medium or a psychic or a channel channeler sometimes appears to be taken over by a spirit or a demon, it's because those spirits want the person to think, hey, we've just possessed you and then we're away again. But in actual fact, the truth is they are always possessed by these spirits. You know, when Dana and I came out of the paranormal and, and came to Jesus Christ for exorcism, we literally had demons cast out of us yes. that had came into us during our years involved in that kind of stuff. Yeah. Wow. That's, yes. uh, that doesn't surprise me now because of the things I'm finding out. It doesn't. Yes. Like when I, when I went to get my deliverance, I literally went with the intentions of taking my husband to get him deliverance mm -hmm. <laughs> because he, I, I thought that I got an attachment on some of these investigations and mm -hmm. when I, I brought it home and that it attached to my husband because my husband kept getting attacks. I mean, it, when he tried to pray, the fan went flying across the room into the wall. And wow. there were so many incidences, and we woke up one night, and it had it had assaulted him. It would it would come as a spirit of a woman, a very attractive woman, and it would it would seduce him, and then uh, but then it would turn ugly and it would attack him. And that one night he it did that to him, and he literally after everything was said and done, and we were rebuking it and everything. He had a big bite mark in his growing area. So I thought, okay, I need to get him delivered. So I took him to a church. And while we were there, um, I, we went down there, and I started telling the pastor, you know, what was going on. And he said, uh, I told him that I was an investigator, and I thought maybe a spirit attached to my husband. And he said, honey, you got to stop doing what you're doing. And I said, why? What do you mean? He said, well... It's because what you're doing, he said, that's, that gives the demons a legal right to come in your home and do these things. And I was like, really? I, you know, I just didn't even put that together. I thought I was helping people, trying to clear their homes and stuff. Well, then wow. when he started sure. praying for my husband, he also started praying for me. And little did I know, when he started doing that, I was the one that started manifesting. I felt like I needed to get out of there. It was like a a really bad panic attack that I couldn't control. And I kept thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I, and then I thought, well, wait a minute, you know, maybe it, I need to just rebuke it in the name of Jesus, you know? So I just started rebuking it, it, you know, and I was like, you got to leave now in the name of Jesus, you've got to go. Well, then all of a sudden that feeling I was feeling, it broke. It just stopped. So, and he was sitting there praying wow. over us and casting any spirits out of us. And that's what happened. I literally, it was me that got deliverance. <laughs> but I thought it was hit my husband, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and, I wow. wanna, and I And I want to add, just because I just went through that, I wanted to add, it's very important. My husband had on a rosary bead necklace. And the, the guy asked us, he says, why do you have that on? And my husband said, well, we got it. I got on for protection. And I told the man, I said, well, look, I said, I have these rosary beads all over my house. I have Bibles open in every room, and we cannot get rid of these spirits. He said, please take that off. So my husband, we, we looked at each other. We're like, we're in a church. Why would he tell us to take off rosary beads, right? So my husband took it off and put it in his pocket. And I said, why, why would you have him take that off? He said, you have to realize something. He said, when you take your faith off on a, and put it on an object, you're taking your faith off Jesus. It's Jesus and him alone that is going to give you freedom. And right. I don't know what it was. It just broke. It was, and, it, and it all hit me, you know, like, gosh, that makes sense. No wonder all these other things aren't working. I, we use anointing oil, holy water. 
we, we said prayers to St. Michael the Archangel, which later I found out you don't do that. It's, 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 not, it's against the Bible. You know, God gives the angels charge over us. We, we, we are, Jesus is our mediator. You know, we're supposed to pray to him. You know, it says no man can come to the Father except by me. You know, so, right. um, so that was just some important points that I learned during that whole experience. Um, but I definitely see what you're saying. Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I think as well, you know, Dana and Laura, um, it's almost like because my mum and I used to do that too when we were involved in it all. Sometimes we would say the name of Jesus and we would do different things. And I know you used to use things like sage or people use different things like maybe candles or whatever. And, you know, even later on when I did eventually become a Christian, um, and I started to, to believe the Bible then, but still, and I, and I still read the Bible, obviously, but, but it's still not a case of just um, quote a Bible verse and you'll be okay. Because as you say, it's, yeah, we trust in the Bible, but it's Jesus who we trust in, and, you know, it's Jesus who, who we're praying to. And it's that relationship with him that as we get closer to him, his power uh, comes through us. And as the Bible says, it then allows us to cast out demons and so on, because the Bible says, you know, if you believe in Jesus, you will cast out demons. And so it is Christ himself um, with us and through us um, that gets rid of these things, rather than, for example, just, you know, treating the Bible like a lucky charm, if that yes, makes right. sense. Yes, yes, yeah. right. Like a magical wand. <laughs> sure. Instead, you know, of, instead I, of applying it to our lives, we, you know, use it as a tangible weapon. You know. Or like that, you know, I remember my mum and I, we had a Bible, we would even sleep with the Bible under our pillow, thinking yeah. it would protect us, but we didn't realise, we didn't yet have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we weren't actually, you know, walking with him and in his power until uh, later. Yes. Well, you know, I did want to mention uh, really quick, I don't know how much time we have, but a few other things that happened to me this past year after Sam sure. had died. Um, other ahead. than the things I, the other than the things I have mentioned, um, one of the things was I started to get very sick, and it started around March, and it started where I just couldn't swallow. For some reason, I was having difficulty swallowing. I was sent to all these different doctors. No one could find anything wrong with me. And as that was happening, I woke up on Easter and I couldn't urinate. Literally could not urinate. Wow. I was at the emergency room like 1130 that night, oh. and they took all mm -hmm. kinds of tests. They could not mm -hmm. figure out. My bladder was empty. They, do, they did not know what was wrong. Wow. So they left me. They sent me home the next morning at like 630 in the morning with a catheter attached to me oh, for goodness. three over three weeks. And during that time, I was starting to hallucinate. And I have, I have never hallucinated in my life. I was hallucinating spiders. Mm -hmm. I thought I was losing my mind. Mm -hmm. the, I, there were spiders everywhere. I mean, I would be in the bathroom and I would see these gigantic black spiders, just like an, arm, an army of them, not even one or two, like an army of them, just coming wow. toward me, crawling wow. toward me. Mm -hmm. In my head, I'd be laying in bed watching TV, and I would see them start to climb up my And when I say armies of them, I mean like, Thousands of them wow. just slowly coming toward me, That's and I remember, mm -hmm. I remember being on the toilet one night and screaming for my boyfriend and trying to put my feet up in the air. I'm like, Ron, get in here! There's these spiders, and he's like, he kept saying, Laura, mm -hmm. please go to bed and close your eyes. It's not real. They're not real. Oh but goodness! It's easy for someone you else know, to say that. Yeah. And they don't see it. Absolutely. I, yeah. I don't believe they were hallucinations. You know, back oh. in the day when I was into the old cult, um, New Age and so on, I used to see things like that and my mother and it, it wasn't hallucinations. And it, it, it's interesting how demons, you know, will pretend to be even spiders or snakes or, oh. or so on to attack us. Um, yeah, and even after when I, when I did become a Christian, eventually... Uh, that still happened to me for a while until um, I actually, they call it sleep paralysis, of course, but right. um, until I actually had those 
uh, demons cast out of me in Jesus' name, and then that type of phenomena stopped uh, happening for me. But you, yeah, definitely would agree with you there that it's not um, hallucinations. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm glad to know that now, but there's two other things that happened, mm-hmm. and this was up at, actually up until about a week or two before I came in Florida. I started to, well, this is, no, this is going back to May. I, all of a sudden, I would start falling out of my bed at night, just rolling out of bed and waking up as I hit, hit you know, the thump, and I am woke up in the middle of the night and here I am on the ground, and I'm like, what am I doing on the ground? I'd go back to bed. The next night, the same thing. I would roll out of bed. It wasn't like I was having a nightmare. I never remembered a nightmare. I just would end up on the floor. You didn't even remember the roll out of the bed, did no. you? You just would wake no, up it, on the bed. I'd wake up on the floor. A lot of people, actually, when they are, you know, there's an open door uh, to mm-hmm. the demonic, you know, um, a lot of times they will be pulled out of their bed. That is so common. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, well, one of the Ghost Adventure guys, uh, I think it was, yes, it was Zach. He was on uh, some kind of interview or on some kind of TV appearance, and he he said that he had been being pulled out of his bed at home. Wow. Yes. It happened to me and my mom, too, and I remember my mom used to scream from the wow. other room, and I used to go run through and see her. Oh. And one time, she literally was picked up from her bed and thrown right across to the other end of the room. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. Wow. And then the only other two things that happened that I wrote down was right before I came, I was in my bed recovering from my, well, actually, after the third time I fell on my shoulder, it actually tore the tendon off my bone. That's when I needed surgery. And I'm still healing oh from it. I'm not working. As I was laying in bed. It actually injured her. That's unbelievable. Oh, it, that's terrible. It, it, the tendon, was, it tore my tendon right off the bone after the third oh, fall. Man. Oh, man. And then I was laying in my bed, and I have a beautiful picture of my daughter next to my TV on the wall. And I remember I was looking at it, and I was babysitting Caden that weekend. He was downstairs on my computer. And I'm just looking at the picture, and all of a sudden, my daughter's picture faded, and the picture turned black, and all of a sudden, a face of a wolf imposed oh. itself on this picture. Wow. And I, it happened, and I, I kept rubbing my eyes saying, okay, it's me. It's just Oh, my I looked goodness. at it again. It did it for the second time. It did it for the third time. Mm-hmm. Finally, Caden oh. just opened up my door to come in and ask me a question. It stopped. It never did it again. And didn't you say that that was like one of her favorite am- animals or she yes. had, had a wolf? Yes. She yeah. actually she raised, she raised a full-fledged wolf for oh, nine years. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, wow. It was like it was making that oh. connection, though, and doing that yes. play with your mind. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Isn't that the whole incredible? Time, Wow. And the whole time, I, and the whole time, I was saying, "Thank you, Sam. You're giving me a sign. Oh, You're showing." Me. I see. This is what I was doing mm-hmm. the whole time without yeah. realizing it. Yeah. And the last sure. thing that happened to me, and this is the big one. A month after I saw my surgeon, I had to go for my first post-op visit. He said to me, "Take the cast off. Take this big sling you're wearing off. I want you to try to get used to it without it. Just be careful with your arm." I was downstairs in my backyard, letting my dogs out to run around. And I, there's cement that leads into my basement. I took two steps on the cement, and something pushed me. I re- distinctly felt a push. There was not, it was not a windy day. It was not. There was. It was a very muggy, warm day. And as I was falling forward, uh, the first thought that went through my mind is, "Oh my God, this is your first day without your cat. This is your first day without protection on your arm." And as I was falling, I didn't know what to do. I knew I couldn't put my arm out or I would have been in surgery again. So I fell. I just tucked my arms into my chest and fell forward. I cut my face. My knees were all bleeding. But thank God my arms were in that position where they were tucked into my chest. And Mm -hmm. something pushed me. There is no doubt in my mind. I, I I was pushed by something. I was pushed by something. Wow. Mm-hmm. So it basically was trying to injure you the second time. Exactly. Wow. And then, in fact, I just remembered the last thing. The last thing was, um, I don't listen to my voice messages all the time. So right before I left for here, I uh, played my, my voicemail, my messages I missed. And the last one, 
I'm not sure, Dane, if I told you this one. I um, played it, and it was one second long, and it was a woman's voice, and it was a very high-pitched voice. It didn't sound of this world. And yeah. all it was was, help me. Oh, Two wow. words. Wow. Help me. And it was one second long. And I kept replaying it, saying, am I crazy, or am I really hearing this? And I let tons of people listen to it, and they all heard it. So I, I took the envelope information and took the phone number where it said it came from. As I called it, I realized it was my real estate agent because my house is for sale right now. And she said to me, Laura, I never made that call. I know I never made that call. And I said, I know you didn't, Michelle, because it doesn't even sound like you. So she said, send it to me so I can hear it. I sent it to her. Out of everyone I sent it to, she was the only one it would not let hear the voice. Wow. And the funny part about it was we had an open house that day. So she was in my house alone for four hours that day. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. father, when I talked to father, he said it could have made it, you know, he could have, you know, tried to reach you through her cell phone since she was mm -hmm. in your house alone for four, for four hours that day. Yeah. And she checked her phone and, and, and everything. Laura, it was, it, it was not her. It was not her. Sure. Sure. You know, I remember um, um, I shared with you guys um, before, and the, the wonderful thing is you guys are both in the States and you can talk to each other real time, and right. I'm five hours ahead, so it's been great. I've been loving it, knowing that you two guys are, are on the phone together sharing stuff, and then I catch up later with, with what you shared. Uh, it's, I'm so grateful that, that you both can do that. Um, yes. And, you know, I remember... Um, a couple of years back I was called to a house and uh, the woman told me that she had phenomena in the house and by, by now I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian by now and I go to help her and you know it, it was winter time she had the radiator there it wasn't plugged into the wall the power wasn't coming through it was electric and um, she had it switched off but all of a sudden it came on and, and the heat started to come out of it we saw this a so-called shaggle figure walk uh, between the two of us, which obviously I knew it was a demon. And then my cell phone and her cell phone were switched off, but they both turned on and they began to talk to each other using her voice and my voice. <laughs> you know, God. and wow. obvious, obvious, obviously they were just trying to scare her, freak her yes. out. Yes. Um, but, you know, I just took authority over it and I said, you know, this is a demon. These are demons that are doing this, and I'll take authority over them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I cast them out. And, you know, they left, and she didn't have any problems in her house again. But, yeah, these things have got supernatural power. Um, they, can, they can affect the electrics and all of that. Um, yes, right. And, you know, talking about how they affect people's behavior and can change people's behavior, they can make people do things that they would never normally do out of character and so on. Obviously, we feel that's what happened with your brother, Laura. And, you know, my mum, she was the sweetest person you, you could meet, and yet her so-called spirit guides were telling her she had to kill certain people. She had wow. to kill the neighbours. She had to kill my dad. You know, anyone wow. who knew my mum would think that's so out of character for, for Laura's mum to... To, to get that way. So she um, was having things happen in the night constantly by this time and um, she went to the doctor for sleeping tablets and the doctor said, there's no such thing as ghosts, you're schizophrenic, I need to put you in the hospital um, to protect you, obviously. You know, and it was round about that time that I became a Christian um, and started to hear all these stories about people being free from all this kind of stuff yeah. and I became a Christian but the church we joined was just a, a new church. The pastor was just a new new pastor. He didn't yet have that experience of deliverance ministry, a.k.a. exorcism. He'd never cast out demons before. And when my mum came home from the hospital, um, her house was still demonized. She was still getting attacked. And because the pastor didn't really know how to help, she actually killed herself. My God. You know, wow. and that was 26 years ago now, and I hear this kind of thing again and again and again from people um, who have been involved in, in these things and affected by these things. But then I left that church and I found a church that did have exorcism. Um, 
the deliverance ministry there and I got all the demons cast out of me in Jesus' name and all the paranormal activity stopped for me. Um, yeah. Dana's, Dana's got a very similar uh, story there and, and now she and I are, are so grateful to be able to share with people. Similarly with your story, Laura, that, that demons do change people's behaviour. Yes. You know, and, and right. I'm really keen at this point, Laura, if, if, if I can ask Dana to share a really good example of that. Um, from, you know, the, the, the TV show that, that she watched. Um, you know, and, and, and we bless the guys, by the way. We don't want anyone to think we're being nasty here. We are not. You know, Zach Baggins and the team, any Ghost Adventures that are doing this stuff, we are not out to attack you guys. Um, we're not out to insult you in any way. Dana and I were into that too. Uh, and if anything, we just want to gently and lovingly warn you guys and and so Dana please share what you mentioned earlier about that particular show yes um I actually uh had seen on several of the episodes uh I well actually it was even even other shows besides the ghost adventures um but even on the ghost adventure shows on several of the episodes you see like while they're doing the investigation suddenly that one of the investigators would be taken over by a spirit and it, it would be like temporary uh episodes of it but even to the point that they would turn around and try to attack another one of the investigators um, wow. and and i i mean i've got clips of it but we're not going to you know do that because you know out of respect for uh you know the show and copyright and everything but also on the uh, documentary of the Demon House, uh, the Zach Bagans documentary of that house that he bought, and he, uh, you know, did a lot of a very thorough, you know, investigation of it. There were several people that was hurt, uh, come down with mysterious, unexplained illnesses. Um, there was the one guy. He was a cameraman. His name was Adam. And uh, when he went, they were at the house investigating and everything and filming. And uh, he suddenly started feeling bad, and he went and he lay down in the back. And I think he said it was in the basement. They left there, went back to the motel, and he started just vomiting blood. And wow. he suddenly seen what appeared to be a goat man figure that was very mm -hmm. uh, terrifying. And then next thing you know... He's come, He yelled for Zach. He's coming down the hall. And then he starts, like, banging on the wall and yelling very loudly obscenities, taunting the spirits, you know, to come out and do more. And, and I mean, he was just cussing. And, and it was just so weird, um, you know, the way he was acting. But uh, he, he, they ended up, the cameraman got so out of control acting this way that a couple of days later, I think it, they said, was he told Zach to go into the bathroom to get a, a razor blade and to cut his own uh, wrist and kill himself. And oh. so they, 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 they actually let him go. It was either his wrist or his throat or something, but it was just he was telling Zach to do that. So that was the spirit, you know. I mean, that's the way it happens. And then uh, I guess after he left the show and everything, now he's got the, the letters... I mean, the number 666 uh, tattooed on his hand. And and then there was another man that was in the investigation. Uh, he was a, an elder man. I'm not sure of his name. I tried to get it before we started, but I couldn't find it. But, oh, man, the poor guy, he was doing the investigation with Zach, and he st started feeling really bad. And he said he just felt like he was going to pass out and stuff. Well, during that time, even Zach... Uh, something took over him, and he almost attacked the man. He had to walk away because he said mm -hmm. he didn't know why, but he felt like he mm -hmm. wanted to attack him, and he had to catch himself. And then he said uh, the guy started feeling bad and everything. Well, then the guy ended up in the hospital. He had been bleeding out of both ears, and his, his organs started shutting down. They couldn't okay. figure out why. I mean, he was in the hospital. This is documented. You know, they couldn't figure out why or what caused it, but they finally, he come back around. You know, I don't, I, they, to, to this day, I don't even think that they found out why. Well, there was another girl that was in, involved in, in the house. I think she was a prior resident of the house, uh, a prior resident of the house, uh, like before the other family that the documentary was about moved in. 
And she, they stopped by, and they were asking him to do some, uh, you know, EVPs and stuff. I think they were just wanting to. She was interested. You could tell. Well, suddenly, a little while after that happened, she tried. Was this uh, Erica? Suicide. Yes, yes, Erica. This was Erica. Yes, yeah, yeah. she she tried to commit suicide. Well, they had a oh, priest no. come in and try to do a exorcism of her. Now I don't know because it didn't update and show what happened after that, but. This is what I think is is important and 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 you know makes a connection with you two is the fact that uh, he said that after Erica's suicide was aired on TV and it got national attention, Debbie Constantino called him and uh, said or texted him or something and said that she thought that they came in contact with the demon that is in that house remotely. And that they were, uh, you know, asking questions and all. And the demon said something about something's wrong. And right, then, I remember that. I uh, heard that. Right. And then after that happened, she, he said that after that, uh, two months later, that's when the tragedy happened. So, right. you know, well, you know, and I know that he, I don't even think he would have put it in the documentary if he didn't think there was some kind of connection. Right, right. You know, right. but my thing is. I personally don't think it had to do with that house. I think it had to do with just the constant being an open door to these spirits and talking to them and trying to listen to them. And, I mean, that is just, you know, people think that playing with an Ouija board is more dangerous than using an a audio recorder, but it's not. It's the same thing. You're doing the same thing. You're communicating with spirits. The EVP yeah, the yeah. EVP recordings. You're uh, you're wanting to um, them to contact you. So yeah, it you're is basically for a sign, same. You know, right? You're asking well, them to show you a sign, and what could that sign be? It, that hey, that's up to them. Whatever they want to want to do, you know. And it's it's really really dangerous. You know, it's it's very that's that's a common misconception. Is people think that. You know, the Ouija board is what is dangerous, but you can just sit and talk to them that way. Well, see, the reason why all this stuff does happen is because the Bible warns us not to do these things, and that's why. You know, people think, oh, God's not fair. Why would he withhold something good from us? Why would he not let us talk to our dead loved ones? It's not that he's withholding something good from us. He knows that that's not who's going to respond, and he's just right. letting us know, don't do that. It's dangerous. You know, he gives us the warnings to not do it so and then when we go against his word and stuff then that's when we're we are no longer under his umbrella of a tent of a protection you know mm -hmm. and then these right. things happen you know and and so okay. many of us you know um we've got friends as well who are in the deliverance ministry and, and they'll say that you know a lot of paranormal investigators ghost hunters and so on uh do get affected by um spirits attacking them and so on um, it certainly happened to me and my mother and a lot of mediums that we knew but it was something that we didn't talk about because it wasn't a good advert for you know spirit communication yeah, um, right. and they would also say well there's reasons why this can happen and blah 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 and kind of rationalise it away but at the end of the day um, we believe um, as, as Dana said the Bible what it says about this stuff is true um, you know, so there's a lot of paranormal investigators out there and ghost hunters out there who do suffer, maybe not to the extent of, of what we've, we've shared, um, but they do suffer. And basically, this is, this is the reason why um, they are suffering the way they do. Yes, and they don't always come through as paranormal well, activity. You know, they come home with us and they wreak havoc in our families. Uh, I knew a lot of people in our circle, you know, of our paranormal friends, uh, a lot of them had divorces, broken up families, they were constantly fighting, having, uh, you know, um, court cases going on, I mean, it, it was just, and I, and I know that's common anywhere, but it really is a lot, it seemed like a lot more within those groups, you know, um, because mm -hmm. you're really opening yourself up to that stuff, you know. Um, right, and th and that is the enemy's goal is to steal, kill, and destroy us. You know. Right. Well, you know, there is yeah. there's one more thing I want to finish before I finish with my daughter. Um, the night she died, and I realized I couldn't save her. Um, the last time 
I saw my daughter. She was very agitated. She was picking fights with me. And she said to me, I'm going to go out to Walmart. I need a fan for my room. It was very hot because we had just gotten back into our house after the fire. And we were in a Holiday Inn for five weeks. So this was supposed to be a happy night. We're coming back home, finally. And I gave her money. And as I was walking past her in my hallway, and I told Gary this, I will never forget because when I locked eyes with Sam, her eyes were pitch black. Her pupils were pitch black. And she had a look on her face like if she could have killed me, she would have killed me. Oh. And as I mm-hmm. and as I was handing her the money for the fan, a chill ran through my body. And I, to this day, know that was not my daughter. It was not yes. my daughter. You don't get a chill passing through a daughter you've had for 33 years that you've given birth to and loved and adored. And yes. It was not her. And on top of it, what happened was after she passed away, I called my priest and said, please come so I could, you could pray with me over Sam. He was in my house within five minutes. I remember a couple of weeks later he told me, this was the first time he entered my house, and he had said to me, I'll make this quick, and he said to me, Laura, when I walked in your house, he said, I had never felt so much evil surrounding myself in one place in my life. Now, this is a priest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He said to me, the minute he came in my house, he couldn't wait to leave. Oh. Of course, he didn't tell me that that night. And then he said, as he was backing out of my driveway, he felt something as he looked in the rear view mirror. He felt something in the back of his seat. He knew there was something there. And wow. he went mm-hmm. back home to the rectory, and he told me he slept with his lights on for two straight nights. Oh. That's, how, <laughs> that's how scared this yeah. priest was. Like, yeah. This is a priest. Yeah. I, so that shows you how strong this attachment or, or whatever it is I still feel is in my house or with me or yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I can't get rid of it. I can't get and rid you know, of it. Like, like, I don't know what to like, do. Did you tell Dana, and I shared, Dana and I shared with you, we've been through that, Laura, and, and we've been talking to you now for, for weeks privately, and um, we are more than willing to, to help you uh, come through into full freedom like we have done. Yes. Um, there, there was my mother, you know, killed herself. I was going that way myself after she died my house was demonized by all but you know jesus christ will have the victory this is no coincidence you're speaking to us we do not believe in spiritual coincidences coincidences this is divine destiny and we firmly believe you will be set free laura um and dana and i will be speaking with you in private again as we have been doing and we will stand by you um until you are free from this um, you know, so be encouraged. And so, Laura, you also mentioned to us before the radio show that it wasn't just you and Sam that saw things in your home. You had relatives that also saw things. And um, so you called your son this morning just to, to get him to remind you what he saw. Can you share a little bit of what, what he saw in, in your home? Uh, of course. I'm going to hope I get this in the right order. There were so many things he told me that it was just so overwhelming that I completely forgot had happened. Um, his wife, which is my daughter-in-law, Annika, they had decided to stay here with me for about four to six weeks after Sam passed away because my son was, uh, he didn't want to leave me alone. He knew how bad I was. And from the the minute that they got here, they were sleeping in Sam's old bedroom. And they have four children, two um, identical twins. They were in cribs, and then a seven- and a nine-year-old. So they were all in one room. You can imagine six people. But they were in Sam's room. So the first thing that happened was a few nights after Sam's funeral, um, my daughter-in-law told me that she was in the kitchen, and she turned around and in the doorway of my dining room into my living room, which is basically right where Sam was pronounced dead, 
she was she saw my daughter just like as if she was here it full body everything and she was facing my computer desk which is right next to the doorway and when she started to walk toward what she thought was Sam mm-hmm. Sam disappeared and what she was looking at was my son my son was actually facing the doorway on Sam's phone mm-hmm. so that was really freaky and then the next night she also in the doorway saw my daughter again but this time she saw um, a skinny black shadow like a shadow person very tall and skinny actually behind my daughter um, obviously I know now it wasn't Sam but yeah. That's what really scared her is when she saw that shadow figure, that dark shadow figure directly behind Sam, which wasn't Sam. Yeah. Um, and then after that, um, what happened after that is um, when they were in, in bed together, uh, I have a, a, a mirror on the wall facing the bed sideways, and Annika would, would always sleep on her side facing the mirror. And you could see, you know, Matt in the wall behind Matthew, my, my son. And she woke up during the night because they sleep with the TV on, but the sound off. She always likes that light on. Yeah. And as she looked, as she was laying there, my son was holding her. My son was sleeping. And she turned and just kind of opened her eyes and looked in the mirror. And she saw this black figure hovering over my son, uh, about two feet above him, just hovering over him. Oh. When she saw that, she said she was petrified. She just, like, closed her eyes, grabbed my, my son's hand, and just didn't open her eyes till the next morning. Uh-huh. After that, she was seeing things in the bedroom. Every time they would get close together, something would happen, and it would, they, it would cause her to start fighting with him over nothing. Uh-huh. Um, it, it would seem to make them fight all the time, and really over nothing. Uh-huh. So after she saw this thing hovering over my son, that's when she really got scared and, and was telling me this. And at this point, I was in Florida. I went to see my aunt after Sam died for a couple of weeks just to get away from here. And I said to her, listen, I'll call my priest, have him come over and see what he says. And uh, my priest called me. I had him call my daughter-in-law, and she told him everything that was happening. Mm-hmm. And once she told him that she had seen this shadow figure uh, hovering over Matt in his sleep, he said, I can't wait anymore. He said, you know, I, I need to come over and bless the house. He came the next day with another priest. And from what Annika told me, I was still in Florida, that things had gotten better for a few days. They hadn't seen anything. There was nothing showing up anywhere. And then all of a sudden, it picked up with such intensity that I think if she could have ran out of my house and left, she would have. Yeah, yeah. Um, What happened after that was my son was sleeping, and he told me, Mom, I just felt like something was watching me. He was sleeping, and I don't know whether he just happened to open his eyes, whatever. And he just had this feeling that something was watching him, and he turned to his side and there was this big black just standing over the bed watching him, just facing him. Mm-hmm. And he said it actually gave him sleep paralysis. Uh-huh. He could not move. He couldn't speak. He couldn't move his hand. He couldn't. He was trying to grab his rosary cross, uh, the cross around his neck. He said, Mom, I could not move. I was literally frozen. Yeah. And he managed to finally lift his arm up to grab his cross, and this thing disappeared. Mm -hmm. After that happened, he also told me, actually that same night before this happened, he told me when he went to bed, he was just starting to fall asleep, and he felt something trying to pull him off the bed by his arm, um, Mm -hmm. like something pulling him off the bed. And then that's when he fell asleep, and then this happened with um, uh, this entity that was uh, just staring at him and uh, caused him to freeze up basically. And then after that, my daughter-in-law was in the living room, and this is when it got real bad because she started to see these entities starting to crawl on all fours toward the baby's cribs. Oh. She was in the living room, and the door to the bedroom was wide open. You, you could see it from where she was sitting, and mm-hmm. she actually looked over and saw 
this thing crawling on all fours, going toward the baby's cribs. Oh. And she literally, like, just freaked out. This had happened twice. And the second time it happened, I think, was when she came upstairs. Wait, I'm trying to think if this was when she came upstairs or... No, this is... Okay, I'm sorry. When she finally... Okay, so the next thing that happened was she had gone up during the night. She couldn't sleep. She went to the kitchen to grab a can of soda, and as she was pouring her soda, she said she just looked forward in this black, tall, skinny thing of a, of a shadow figure was racing toward her. And she said it just, like, barreled into her and almost felt like it went through her. Oh. And she said she turned around, and it pushed her into the microwave. It kind of gently just shoved her into the microwave. Uh -huh. When that happened, she was so scared, she did not want to go back into the bedroom and wake my son up because he had to leave. Um, he was working in Philadelphia at the time. It was like 3.30 in the morning. So she got her flashlight, and she sat downstairs in the dining room for a while, and she was so petrified that she actually came up to my bedroom. I was sound asleep, and I was. I woke up at three thirty in the morning with her shining a flashlight in my eyes, and I'm like, "What is going on?" And yeah. that's when she told me what happened. And she just said, "Laura, I can't stay here anymore." She was literally petrified. Yeah. So, um, and there was other things also that happened. Um, that uh, she just said from the minute that they got here, uh, she had started to see these. Oh, I know. And and actually, it got so bad at one point that she had my son cover up all the mirrors oh. and all the, all the reflective uh, glass, everything in the bedroom, because she was seeing it through the mirror. Like, if she was looking into the mirror, she would see it behind her. If yeah. she was staring out my glass window, she would see the reflection behind her. Oh. And so Matthew actually had to cover up every window and mirror in that room. So... They ended up staying. They were going to stay longer, and then actually she just said to me one day, Laura, I can't stay here anymore. I just yeah. I can't. She was afraid for the kids, uh -huh. and, I, and I don't blame her, so that's when they ended up leaving. I think they stayed about five weeks. Yeah. And you know, uh, Laura, everything you've described there, um, I'm sure that many of, of, of the listeners listening in will totally understand. Many of them will have experienced it themselves and um, you know certainly I did my mother and I did Dana did um, and you know it very common uh, interesting you said there that um, when uh, Onika and Matthew you know were being uh, pestered by these demons that they even began fighting you know that can be a common result of um, demons in a person's home or, or in their vicinity, it can cause the couple to fight, um, even if they're not normally the fighting type. You know, it's, it's what demons do. They, they, they do like to cause trouble for people. And again, the sleep paralysis, you know, um, which the doctors call it that, but of course we would actually call it demonic attack. Again, that is very common for folks who have um, experienced these kind of things getting pulled out your bed at night, you know, all of that is, is very common. So horrific, horrific stuff. But I'm not surprised they saw that um, in your home. Uh, Dana, did you have anything you wanted to, to ask Laura about that? Uh, just that how they do um, cause the problems in a, in a person's home, you know, and everything. That is so common. Um, because I had seen where people would show signs of, like, anger issues, even depression. And, Laura, I know you can attest to that, you know, with what happened to your mother um, yeah. and everything. And um, and these are people that usually, uh, after it happens or something happens to them, people will look back and say, well, they were not that kind of person. I don't know. That, what, that couldn't have been them that did that. You know, they don't understand how these demonic spirits can literally drive someone. Uh, mm -hmm. to do these things, and they can even hear voices, uh, right. you know, even telling them to do these things, just like Laura uh, had mentioned before, Laura Maxwell, 
uh, how, you know, her mother was even hearing voices telling her to, uh, you know, she, she should kill the neighbors and, and all these things. Um, yeah. You know, the people that would know her would say, no, that wasn't her. You know, that she would have never thought like that, you know. But, uh, so, you know, I have one question. Mm-hmm. I want to cause this, the demon, to get worse after my priest came in here and blessed the house. Oh, yeah. We see that happen a lot. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. Yes, I've even heard other ghost hunters, even the famous ones on TV, say uh, that they had pretty much stop getting blessings because they know, they realize that after they get the blessings, things just get worse. You know, it's like kicking a hornet's nest. Um, wow. You know, but it, it's just not done, if it's done the correct way, you know, the biblical way, uh, that's when you see results. That's when the demonic uh, activity stops, you know. Yeah, I would agree with Dana, you know. Um, obviously, Dana was a ghost hunter. I was a spiritualist, so... We were very much, you know, uh, involved in these things and experiencing all of that kind of thing. But since we've left that, since we've become Christians, we've heard time and time again, people, um, when they get something like that in their house, one of the first things they do is they either phone a a ghost hunter or a priest to come and cleanse the house. But it tends to, sadly, it tends to get worse after it. And then, you know... I would agree with Dana. It's because these people mean well, of course they do, but when they're doing uh, so-called cleansings or blessings in a non-biblical way, it actually doesn't work and it just brings in more spirits because they're not going directly to Jesus Christ. They're uh, maybe, you know, talking to their so-called spirit guides or they're maybe... Uh, saying a prayer to Mary or the saints or, or something like that. And because that is not biblical, it's actually just opening up more. Some people might say it's like it's opening another portal in your home, although I don't tend to like the word portal, but it's not helping the matter. It's only making it worse, basically. And, and you know, God love them, they mean well, but yes. we saw this time and time again that after a, a, a ghost hunter or a priest has come in, We've then had to go, or a friend of ours has went to the property because it's got worse, and we've cast it out in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name only, you know. And the, the demons have gone, and and they haven't, um, they haven't come back. Yes. Yeah, that is amazing. That just shocked me so much. You know, I like I said, I didn't know the specifics because I was in Florida, but I had no idea that it got ten times worse after um, the priest had left here. I yes. was just in shock when she told me that this morning. Yes, yeah. and, and, and the sad thing is, it's not that we're attacking, you know, priest or, or right. you know, um, anybody in the Catholicism religion or anything like that, but uh, because it, just like when I was in the ghost hunting, I didn't know. You know, I really right. did not know these things. Um, just until I got into God's word and really started studying it and, and, you know, listening to preaching and, uh, you know, and everything, that's when I found out, whoa, no wonder, (laughs) no wonder these things wasn't going away. You know, when I was trying the rosary beads and, and sage, I mean, we tried things with all kinds of religions, you know, it's called, uh, syncretism, right, Laura, where, uh, yeah. People try to mix different religions and, and, you know, to try to come up with their own thing that works. And it, it doesn't work that way, you know. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, my mother and I, when we were still spiritualists, um, we tried all sorts of new age things. We tried uh, praying to gods from all sorts of different religions. And it basically just got worse. And that's because we were opening the door to more and more false gods. Yeah, and it wasn't until, obviously, later when um, I came to Jesus Christ alone uh, that I got, you know, deliverance and so on. But, yeah, so please um, continue with uh, the rest of of what you were saying there, Laura. No, basically, that was it. Um, you know, just that it continued, and it actually... Never, it never left here. It never left. Sure. So this has been going on, well, for me, actually, since the investigation after Mark died that I went to with Gary and my daughter, 
And then well, after that was like three and a half, sorry, three and a half years ago, is that about right? Yes, Mark passed away September 22nd, 2015. And the Virginia trip I took was in October of that year. And then everything started about a week later with my daughter and then me, but mostly my daughter. And then once Sam passed away, it was me, all me. Well, Laura, you know, you've been sharing so much with Dana and I offline in the last week or so, and we said it to you then and we say it again, um, we will definitely help you. And I have a good friend, Michael Cummings, that I will uh, contact and um, we will, you know, Skype you and pray with you and get your house cleansed. So we want you to be, um, your mind put at rest on that issue uh, here and now and, um, yeah, um, let's just continue with this interview. Okay, sounds good. I'm ready to try anything. Awesome. Folks listening, again, those of you who think, you know, Dana and, and Laura um, are, are kind of crazy here talking about the Bible and so on, can I just share something with you? Um, I said earlier that historians have proved Jesus Christ really did live as the Bible said, he really did die on the cross, he really was resurrected. Um, but it's also interesting that the, the mother of the New Age movement, um, Madame Helena Blavatsky, famous uh, spiritualist medium of the 1800s, she actually believed Lucifer was God. Um, we have people um, even today who, for example, the, the biggest New Age a website called Spirit Science. Now they're into the New Age and they're into spiritualism and spirit contact and all that. They also feel Lucifer is God. Um, so there's an interesting link there. You know, um, people down through the ages have said that, that that all the psychic powers and so on comes from Lucifer. You know, and that he's not the angel of. of they believe he's the angel of light. But here's an interesting right. link, guys. I want you to 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 listen to. If you ask an ex-Satanist, now, you know, I've done a radio show for, for years, and I've been involved in, in, in helping people for years. If you ask ex-Satanists about Satan, what will they say? It's very interesting. They will say Satan really is Satan, that they discovered that, and that he pretends to still be Lucifer, the angel of light, but he really is evil, and he is, he is um, conning all the New Agers. He's conning ghost hunters to believe in that kind of stuff. So, for example, you may have heard of Anton LaVey. He was the founder of the Church of Satan. Um, he wrote the Satanic Bible. And in his book, um, he wrote on the age of Aquarius. And, and he actually said that Satanists, quote, should reclaim New Age practices and use them in rituals dedicated to the devil where they rightfully Along. Now, he actually said that, that New Agers and ghost hunters and so on have stolen, if you like, these uh, phenomena and activity that actually belong to Satan. Um, you have, so Anton LaVey said that, um, Alistair Crowley, the, the, the Satanist who said he was the most evil man alive, he literally studied a lot of the New Age practices. He was a, a guru, if you like, of New Age practices, including the spiritualist type activities and there was a guy who in his book Confessions of Alistair Crowley even said he wanted to become Satan's chief of staff. The guy admitted he was thoroughly evil and there you are, they're basically saying that the stuff that the New Agers do, that the ghost hunters do is actually all demonic stuff. They're being deceived by it and you know I think most of you probably will have heard of that quote that some philosopher said um, and he said the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he doesn't exist. Now, that's a philosopher's quote that you've probably seen in movies down through the years. So, you know, a lot of New Agers and ghost hunters, as I say, believe that Lucifer is God. He's the source of, of psychic powers, um, you know, and that he's still this angel of light. But we have proof, we have evidence that, hey, guys, actually, the Bible is true, Lucifer, yeah, he was the angel of light, but he fell, he became Satan, he is evil, right. and all, all his demons as masters of disguise have deceived precious, precious people 
like ghost hunters and, and all of them, precious people to believe in these lies. And yeah, sometimes they will destroy their life. Sometimes they won't like in such tragic ways. But at the end of the day, they want those people's souls because they do not want people to realize Jesus Christ is the Savior. They do not want people to come to him for salvation and, and go to heaven with him. And that is like... If you like, we see it. We see in the news all the time, don't we, about deceptions that happen, and you know this person deceives that person. Politicians deceive each other. This is the ultimate deception down through history that Satan and demons have got people deceived by. Laura, I want to say one other thing before we end the show. Mm -hmm. I know you had asked me privately, you and Dana, what Gary and I would say to somebody if they asked us, what do you think about us getting into the paranormal? What do you think? That's you what know? I was going to, you've took the thoughts out of my <laughs> head, Laura. That, that's exactly what I was about to ask you there. Yes, that is, because that's a very important question to both of us. I'm going to let Gary answer first. Um, my answer to that would be no. <laughs> Definitely not. No way. I mean, I think you would have to be out of your mind to want to get into that and start experiencing horrible things like uh, letting things into your life demonically. Um, definitely not. That would be my answer to that. Yes, and my answer would be same as Gary's, absolutely not, only because more, more so than Gary, I've experienced it firsthand. I lost mm -hmm. my brother. I had a major fire at my house that I know was caused uh, because of something evil. And my mm -hmm. daughter died the day, the day we came back to my house. My daughter passed away mm -hmm. unexpectedly in my arms at 33. And there is nothing I could say. I wish I could bring her back, but I can't. And I have to stop blaming myself for yes. taking, taking her to Virginia with me because I feel if I didn't, she still would be alive. I feel if Mark didn't get involved in this, he would still be alive. There's no doubt in both our minds both are about this. Mm -hmm. That was not either one of them. It wasn't. And if anybody ever wants to get back into this stuff or has a question about it, let them listen to more of your shows. Yeah, More of your shows would would convince me. I wish I, I knew of you guys before I even went to Virginia. Mm -hmm. I never heard of you guys before. I'm so glad I came across Dana's um, one video when she was looking at the beautiful sunrise in Florida. That's mm -hmm. what made me contact her. And Laura, mm -hmm. you are just absolutely a beautiful person. And I just want to thank you personally from the bottom of my heart for having me on. We're so we're so proud of you, Laura and Gary. We're so so proud of you for doing this because we know how hard it must be. Um, as I say, I lost my mother to to suicide through this. She couldn't take it any longer, and she took her life. Yeah. Um, so you know, we we do understand, and and we're so grateful to to Jesus that He's connected us together. Um, and yeah. Just before we, we, we end the show now, that's been, oh, an hour, 35 minutes um, mm -hmm. before we end the show. We want to emphasise to listeners that, that we, we have tried to cover this sensitively um, and delicately and that, again, none of us have um, got any um, hatred or anything like that to, to any ghost hunters at all. We've actually no, been there. We've been there. And yeah. as Laura said, they are lovely, lovely people. Dana yeah. and I will vouch for that. We were once involved. We totally understand that. Um, and we just want to reach out to folks maybe in the same position and plead with them with all our hearts to please consider what we've shared today um, and the truth about, about Jesus Christ. Um, you know, and, and Laura said she wants us to, she hopes that she hopes that you guys check out our, our, our other shows um, about these things. So we will share our blog details in, in just a moment. But before we do so, um, I would like to ask Dana to pray for, for you, Laura and, and Gary. And 
bless you both. Um, it, it's been lovely getting to know you th th these last few weeks. Um, and again, thank you so much for coming on the show today. You're more than welcome. And thank you very much. For having us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you You're both. welcome. Yes. Dana, please, please, please go ahead, sis. Okay. Father God, I ask that you protect each one of us. I ask that you protect Laura and Gary and, and every other person in their family. And I ask you to comfort all of those that knew Mark and Debbie and Sam. And I ask that you continue to reveal the truth to Laura and Gary and to everyone else that is listening. All-powerful Father God, I ask that you stop the enemy from distracting us away from the truth. And I ask that you cancel out all the tactics of the enemy and every plan that he has against us. We speak confusion into the enemy's camp right now. We ask that the listeners will walk in love during this time and to refuse offense or strife. We believe that the enemy will not triumph in their plans against us. And I pray that their plans will be exposed and destroyed under your precious blood. We declare that we will use the word of God against the enemy. I pray that anyone listening that has not accepted Christ in their hearts, that God will put it in their hearts to do so. And I ask that anyone listening that needs your forgiveness, that you will give us your grace and mercy and forgive us all. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Dana. And, and I'd, just like to pray, I'd just like to pray for the audience now. Um, you know, if, if, if any of you feel, which I thoroughly believe you will be, you know, this show has touched you. And, and if, if you believe that you were meant to listen today, we believe that too. We don't believe in spiritual coincidences. We believe in divine destiny. And if you would like to now turn away from those practices that you've been involved in, maybe you've not been involved in them, but you've watched it on TV. If you would like to turn away from that now because you recognize it's demonic, and ask Jesus Christ to be your saviour. Or, if you want to rededicate your life to Jesus afresh, please say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you that you are real. I thank you that you love me and that you want me free from all of these things and you want to give me a brand new start you want to cleanse me you want to cleanse my home and you want me to just experience all the good things that you have for me heavenly father i now believe jesus christ did die on that cross for my sins he did rise again and he is alive today and seated with you in heaven so heavenly father i ask now that jesus christ will come into my life I, I'm sorry for the mistakes, the, the, the sins I've done in my life. And Jesus, I ask you to wash me clean with your precious, precious blood. Be my Savior, be my Lord. Guide me through the rest of my life. And Lord, break all of the curses that have been on my life thus far and, and begin to release the fullness of your blessings for my life and, and shower me with, with your love, with your joy and with your peace. In Jesus' precious, precious name, amen. 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 And folks, you know, if you want, you can check out my blog, Dana's blog. Uh, for example, my blog has a list of deliverance ministries on there all around the world, actually. Even some of those guys are on Facebook, and that's under my section labeled mm -hmm. Contact Advice. And, you know, if you've got no one in your area, get in touch with these guys on Facebook. They'll uh, cleanse your house in, in Jesus' name over Skype. Um, if you need exorcism like Dana and I did, they'll do that for you over Skype. You know, the Bible does say that if you believe in Jesus Christ, you will cast out demons. You will heal the sick. He wants everyone to be free. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to part two of this show and thank you for listening in to part one. Since then, it's been just such an absolute joy um, for Dana and I because, as promised, we got in touch with a friend, Michael Cummings. He's um, a deliverance minister, a friend of mine. I met through Revelation TV, oh, 10 years ago maybe, and um, I recommend a lot of people to him for deliverance ministry. And he 
was very happy to join us with, with Laura um, on Skype and wonderfully she had wonderful deliverance from the Lord Jesus Christ. The demons were cast out of her and her own praise God. Um, it was just wonderful. And so Laura was very keen to come back and do a part two to share with you all, um, you know, just what's been happening. So if I was to actually give this part two a title, I suppose I would call it something like The Exorcism of Laura Constantino. However, I don't want to be sensationalistic about these things, um, so I won't give it that title. And also I would like to say that um, the word exorcism can, um, you know, give connotations of like a Hollywood movie or something that's um, a very, very rare occurrence, a very, very rare event and, and that very few people ever need it. However, Dean and I would argue it's not at all the case. It's actually very, very common. Many people need it and, um, you know, sadly the churches just don't do enough of it. But if you look at the life of Jesus Christ and the disciples in the Bible, it was a very common part of their ministry. And as disciples today, we can still cast out demons in Jesus' name if we are walking in close relationship with him. So um, I just want to welcome Dana back to the show. And how are you doing, Dana? Oh, I'm doing fine, Laura. How are you? I'm doing fine, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just been a joy for you and I, just um, befriending Laura and getting to know her and um, helping her um, these past couple of weeks, hasn't it? Oh yes, it has, and nothing throws my heart more than uh, seeing someone get freedom. Absolutely, me too, thoroughly agree with you. So, Laura Constantino, welcome back to the show, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, and thank you for having me back. Well, it's a joy to, to have you back, Laura, and, and to hear more of, of your miraculous story. Um, and, and please, before we get into the, into the questions, you have a poem that you would like to read today at the outset of the show. P please tell us about this poem. Well, actually, after my daughter passed away, of course, you know, being her mother, I wanted to look on her Facebook page, you know, see her last posts and stuff like that. And this was the last post she put up on her page. This was the morning she passed away. And I just read it and I was like, wow, this, this is just bizarre. So I just want to, it's short, I just want to read it to you if you don't mind. To Caden, if kisses were water, I'd give you the sea. If hugs were leaves, I'd give you a tree. If love was a planet, I'd give you a galaxy. If love is life, I'd give you mine. Wow. Yeah, that's what I said. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's beautiful. And that was the that was the morning of her death. Oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Oh, uh, it's beautiful. Yes, it is. Yeah. Her, son was, her son was her life. Yes. So. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of this interview, I will be adding a photo gallery of, of some photographs, Laura, with you and your daughter, Sam, Aidan, and, um, you know, Mark and Debbie Constantino, too, and, and your other brother, Gary, and so on. So, you know, you've been sending us some beautiful photographs, and I will put that at the end um, okay. of the video for, for folks to see. Um when you're talking, Laura, could you just keep your mouth a little back from the mic because I think it's a bit close to the mic and it's picking up that um, emphasis on the S letter when you, when you speak. Okay. That would help tremendously. Um, okay. So, you know, as I was saying there in the intro, that after part one, I got on to my friend Michael down in London and... Um, Dana and I joined him and, and the three of us prayed for, for your deliverance or, you know, people might call it exorcism. Um, so we'd like you to share about, about that, Laura. You know, how did you feel before it and, you know, how did you feel 
doing it. Just, just share that share that experience with us, please. Okay. Well, I know before the deliverance, um, Dana was telling me certain things to cleanse my house um, before the deliverance. Yeah. And I have to say that that was extremely hard for me because the things that she was telling me to kind of, you know, get put away somewhere, you know, get rid of, were things that I was brought up learning to pray to, to pray for, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like rosary beads. That, I'd have to say, was the hardest thing for me to take out of my house. Yeah. Um, yes. The statues, I've had plenty of statues um, in my house. Uh, crystals, I mean, the, the crystals, the New Age stuff was fairly easy. It was more the stuff that I grew up with. Like, basically, the rosary beads, to me, were the the hardest thing for me to, to take out of my house. Yeah. And um, Dana said the same, you know, she, she had rosary beads she got rid of. And um, when you say statues, what, what were the statues of? Well, I had a statue of St. Anthony with the baby Jesus in his arms in my bedroom. And I had about a two-foot statue of the Virgin Mary, actually um, about a foot away from Sam, where Sam was pronounced dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, And, you know, I remember that when Dana and I were, were uh, um, encouraging you to, to cleanse your home. And I remember thinking, oh, boy, this is going to be so hard because... Mm -hmm. Things like that, we have an emotional, you know, uh, attachment to, and, and it's so difficult. Obviously, Dean and I had to throw things out our home before our deliverance too, and we understand how it's difficult for people to to do that. But when you realise that these things actually are an open door to demons, um, then it's it's good to to get them out, you know, to get them out our house and. Uh, Dana, do you want to say anything about that? You know a bit more than I do about rosary beads and, and things like that. Uh, no, I just, um, I, you know, during the, the paranormal investigations that we did, uh, we also tried, you know, using the rosary beads and holy water and uh, anointing oil and all that stuff. Uh, but it wasn't until my deliverance, you know, uh, that, like I said in part one, um, how we found out that actually those rosary beads and stuff, when we're placing our faith in those objects, we're taking our faith off Jesus. You know, uh -huh. and, the, and the Bible says that no man can come to the Father except by him. It doesn't say except by Mary or except by the saints. It has to be through Jesus. He is our mediator, you know, uh -huh. so and no object is going to save us. You know, it's Jesus and him alone. Yeah, absolutely, I would agree, and, and I think, you know, again, having been in, in the deliverance ministry for years, we've noticed that folks, whether it's, you know, statues of Mary or, you know, Buddha or yeah. any, any kind of a false god, really, the Bible does say that these are false gods, and when people put their faith in them and even pray to them, sadly what happens is um, demons become attached to those objects because they're objects of idolatry, um, and they, they, they leave an open door for for demons to, to be there. So, yeah, it, it was wonderful when um, you told us, Laura, that you had cleared all, you know, all the things out your life, and out your house. And so would you say, looking back on it, although it was difficult parting with um, certain objects, that you realised it was worth it to get rid of these demons and curses out of your, your life? <laughs> Oh, now, definitely. Uh, looking back now, um, I was ready to do whatever you guys told me to do. Um, I had, you know, went the route of, of praying and saying the rosary and uh, praying to, um, you know, the saints and doing all this stuff. And it did not, it did not take what was happening to me away. It was still here. And then I, I, I was at the end of my rope. I was literally, I felt like I was losing my mind. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, it certainly seemed that way to Dana and I. And even on the show in part one, you, you did, you, did uh, you know, start crying, saying you didn't think you would ever be free from it. Yeah. And it was hard hearing you cry. 
um, on the show. And, um, and even, yeah, so, even, I'm sorry, and even so, during the process of her clearing out the house, when she would contact us and she would ask, but what about this? It just mm -hmm. seemed like it was so hard when it came to those objects. My heart mm -hmm. was breaking for her. I felt so bad that I, I mean, and I even talked to Laura Maxwell about it. I said, Laura, I, I feel so bad for, I don't know what to say. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's just so difficult to tell people that, you know, especially yeah. when that's what they're, uh, they've always went to, you know, for help. You see, sure. but, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to butt in. <laughs> But that's no, it's, it's you know. good to doing that. And, you know, I was the same. I really felt for Laura, but I knew in my heart I had to stay truthful. Yeah. I had to give her the information that would help her. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want her to have a, um unsuccessful exorcism, if you like. I wanted yes. it to be successful, and I knew for that to be the case, all of these um, things had to be thrown out, and it was a case of really a thorough cleansing of, of the home um, before yeah. we began to, to do the, the, the deliverance and obviously what helped that tremendously was when we explained this to Laura and Laura then began to pray to Jesus only and trust Jesus only for her salvation. You know, yes. she stopped praying to Mary and the saints and so on and then um, that was just wonderful yes. because then I knew now we're getting somewhere and, um, you know, Jesus' power will come into this this situation. Um, yes. so, so, Laura, could, could you share, you know, about the actual deliverance yourself for folks that might not know what it was like? Everyone, it can be slightly different, but, but share with us what it felt like to you and what your thoughts were during it and so on. Okay, uh, where do I begin? Um, at first, I have to say I was skeptical. Um, I really didn't know what to expect. I'd never been through anything like this before or actually had known anyone um, other than you guys uh, that had went through anything like this. But I was so, uh, there was just so much tor turmoil in my life and so much sadness and grief and I was suicidal and depressed and I just couldn't take it anymore. So I said I had nothing, I had nothing to lose. Yeah. So as Michael started the deliverance, I remember that morning, that day I fasted, I didn't eat, and I was trying to pray as much as I could that day. And I was just trying to clear my mind, you know, to go into it with an open mind. And I would say um, I didn't know what it would feel like. I just remember clasping my hands in prayer um, on top of my desk listening to Michael and I remember seeing you guys on either side praying and as Michael was praying over me I you know it took a, it took a couple of minutes I was trying to pray in my own head and all of a sudden it was like I had no control at all over my body my whole body started to tremble, I would even say almost to a point of just shaking violently. Yeah. Like I, I was having trouble speaking. I heard voices in my head saying, don't listen, don't listen. Uh -huh. And I just grabbed my hands and was covering my ears and I was trying to say, uh, Michael, they don't want me to listen. I, I, if they're telling me to put my hands over my ears. Uh -huh. And he said, take your hands off your ears. You know, and um, I, I did, and it was a while after that before I started to, I mean, the shaking got just so violent, I literally had no control. Uh -huh. and, and I don't know how long this was going on for, because I wasn't paying attention to time. And then all of a sudden, um, my head, it was like my head exploded. It's almost like the worst migraine you could ever get in your life. Mm -hmm. And after that, I just broke out in a very cold sweat. And all I remember was feeling totally depleted of energy, just totally exhausted. Yeah. And I had to actually, when this was over, I had to go lay down because I, I, I there was nothing left inside me. I was just empty at that point. Mm -hmm. It was the, the strangest feeling in the world because I had no control over my body. I couldn't stop it from shaking if I wanted to. 
Yeah. And I, I remember, you know, during that, um, Dana and I were, were saying to you, you know, it's okay, just go with it. But Michael was praying and we were encouraging you to go with it and, you know, not, not to be scared. Not everybody has a headache when they go through deliverance. Not everybody feels, um, you know, that pressure in their head. Not everybody hears a voice telling them not to listen. And um, not everybody shakes or uh, sweats. You know, everyone's different. And um, I had a lot of deliverance. And when, when I had mine, I didn't have, you know, a headache. So people, please don't be put off listening, thinking, you know, if you have it, it would be the same as this. It's not necessarily the case. But bear in mind, it, it was a, a, a deliverance where many demons were cast out and... Um, it certainly has changed Laura's life. Um, and also, you know, Michael was praying and we were praying to cast those demons out of, of Laura's home. And since that, since that uh, session, that ministry session, Laura, have you told us that all the demonic appearances in your home stopped? Yes. Uh, as fast as they came into my life, was as fast as they left. Wow. After, the, after that deliverance, and I had that, I think, what, the end of August? I can't wow. remember. Not one single thing, and I thank God. Nothing has happened at my house. I have not seen anything. I do not feel depressed anymore. I do not feel suicidal anymore. I wake up and I feel like a, I feel like the old me before mom passed away and I thank you and Dana for doing this for me and doing God's work doing Jesus' work to help me because otherwise I don't know where I'd be I really don't Sorry guys, we had a, a connection problem there with Skype and um, it's interesting, I've, I've been doing these interviews for about 10 years now and you know, oftentimes when you get to the part about the, the deliverance in the story, um, Skype starts to play up, <laughs> you know, and, and it's true that the enemy doesn't want people to hear these testimonies. Um, demons are real. They don't want people to get free. They don't want people to um, have a transformed life. They'd rather you just go kill yourself. So they don't want people to hear wonderful stories like this. And, you know, Laura was sharing with us that um, she had a headache during the deliverance not everyone gets that, so please don't feel that that will be the case with you um, if you need deliverance. Laura, you, you said that after the deliverance session that all the demonic occurrences in your home stopped. Yes, they stopped um, almost as quick as they started in my life. That's as quick as they stopped. As soon as the deliverance was over, uh, nothing else happened. I woke up the next morning. I felt like a different person. I First thing I did was pray to Jesus and thank him. And up until this point, I could say I am like the same person I was before Mark died. I feel like I feel normal again. I feel like I've gotten my life back. And I feel uh, more comfortable in my own skin. I feel like I can live in my house and not want to move because Sam passed away in my arms here. Yeah. So I, I can't tell you. It's like a totally different me. And it's all because of you, Michael, Dana, and, you know, having Jesus work through you, basically. That's wonderful, Laura. That's, that's wonderful. And it's such a joy for, for us. For us to hear that, um, we are obviously continuing to have some audio issues here, but I do hope um, the listeners stay with us 
we keep trying to uh, fix it, but we're not having much success. So please, um, please do bear with us. Um, yeah, you know, it was it was awesome um, to hear how you felt that the very next morning when, when you spoke with Dana and I, um, it was just wonderful to hear how, how much better you felt the very next morning. Yeah, she had yeah. even mentioned, um, if you don't mind me saying it, uh, but she had even said something to the effect of, when I woke up, it was cloudy out, but I felt such joy and like it was a bright day. You know, it was like she could hear the birds singing and it was just, you know, like she was alive again, you know. And that just really got me when she ex described it that way. Um, you know, like a lot of people, you know, until you've actually went through deliverance, you can't, it's hard to understand how you feel afterwards that, you know, the bondage is broke, you feel free. And I never forget, I've seen miracles happen when people get physical healings done. But I think the biggest miracle that ever happened to me was when I got my deliverance because I could truly see everything differently. It was, everything was just different, different, totally from the inside out. And right. it was so great to hear that that happened with her, you know, and yeah. I, it was such a joy to hear that. I, I cried. I mean, I just, I was so happy for her, knowing what she was growing through. Uh, not only was she grieving for her brother and for her daughter, but she had, it, 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 it was taken over her. It was to the point where she was so depressed, she didn't even want to get out of bed, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, now she can grieve naturally. Uh, the way God intended it, you know, God said there's a date, there's a time for mourning, there's a time for, you know, a dancing, you know, there is a time for mourning, but the way it was taken over her, the enemy was taking advantage of it and was trying to drive her into depression and yeah. even worse, suicide is probably what he was trying to do. Absolutely, and you know, I was the same day and I was just crying, crying with joy and Yes. Uh, yeah, I could see where um, it, it was a torment that was happening. So, you know, there was a demon of, of torment there as well that, that was cast out. And it's like Laura can grieve properly now, yes. you know. And sorry, we're getting a bit of feedback on the line again. Um, yeah, and I agree with you that w when Laura told us how she felt, I could identify because I remember feeling the exact same way when I had deliverance years ago and um, you know it was just wonderful to hear from you Laura how, how different you felt and have you since then obviously that's been back in August was it so yeah. we're now into October obviously we waited a little while to do part two because we want to see the fruit in your life we want to see how you progress how you change how you grow and how your life has been improving before we started part two. So that's been two months now your, your deliverance has happened. And would you say that your your you know, your outlook in life has, has changed since that? Um, because obviously it was a significant um, event in your life. Yes, um, without without a doubt, uh, this was a miracle that saved my life. And it gave me my sanity back, and it brought peace and stability back into my life. And I'm not suicidal, like I said. I'm not depressed when I wake up. I can get up and go to work and feel okay. And I know that Jesus is always with me. And I also know that my daughter is in a better place, and she isn't suffering anymore. As much as I miss her, I know that I can finally look in my house and, and not feel like I need to move because of this. Amen. And that is a blessing. Just, just there, that's a blessing. Yeah. And, yes, because you were so de so uh, determined to get the house sold. You couldn't even bear going home. After you came here to Florida right. to do I, the I, part one, you was dreading yep. going home. Now, yes. you says, you know what? I'm taking the house off the market. I don't even care to move. I, I You know, yes. I, I, I'm no longer under torment in my home. And that yes. alone was a huge, a huge deal, you know. No, it really, that's why I'm saying it changed my life completely for the better, uh, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Wow, that's great. 
it's wonderful. I mean, it's really been a transformation. I mean, we've known you, Laura, now for a couple of months since you first contacted us on YouTube and we remember, you know, where you were at and, and what your faith was like and so on and the, the transformation to, to go from, you know, now praying to Jesus only and, and reading your Bible because you'd never read the Bible before until you spoke to Dana and I and right. to now, now be reading the Bible every day and, and praying to Jesus yes. only as well. You know, it's just like so much of your life ha has changed. And yeah, it's amazing you, you, you don't want to sell your house anymore. And, you know, that's uh, wonderful news from going to actually absolutely hating being in the place to suddenly being comfortable in it once again is just what a joy. Yes, that um, that is the that's really a big thing for me because I love this house and you know I raised Sam's child with her here, and that's the memories I want to remember, not that last night that she died here. And Absolutely. It now that and now I could, so I'm happy here now. Thanks that's, to you guys. That's wonderful. That's <laughs> that wonderful. Is. And you know, you know, Dana and I were so thrilled when you contacted us. You know, in the beginning and. Um, through uh, our YouTube channels and we just knew, we instantly knew that Dana and I, we were so excited for you, we were so happy for you because we instantly knew God had had connected us three and that we firmly believed you would get that miracle from Jesus, you would get that freedom and we were just so delighted uh, that you contacted us and of course dear Michael, our, our friend, so grateful for him. Um, for leading, for leading that that deliverance. Definitely, and like I said to Dana, um, I was just flipping through YouTube because I was home and you know with the surgery on my shoulder, and I just came across her her, her video, and it just struck me because she was sitting in a beautiful spot looking at the sun come up over the water, and I'm like, let me just listen to her, and I saw oh, her. And then when she mentioned more, we were, I was like, you know something? This was meant to be. I could have listened and turned on any other video, on, but it was it was Dana's video that I came across and I stuck oh, with. And I was like, wow. That's wonderful. That's, you know, the, show, the name of that show was called The Great Paranormal Deception. <laughs> and that's that something. Was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, I just really think God did that. You know, yes, um, yes. cross paths for a reason, and and I truly believe it because I was asked over the years many a times to go on so many different shows, and yeah. I just I wasn't ready. I don't think they were the right shows. Yeah, um, yeah. You you were. This is it. Yeah, and, and it's it. amazing as you say. You just thought you would tune into it, and lo and behold, Dana actually talks about your brother Mark and about. Yes everything that went on, it's like, wow, well, what, you know, there is no coincidence yeah. in that, um, yeah. and that video is, is on my YouTube channel, as well as on Dana's YouTube channel, yeah. um, so please guys, anybody listening, interested in that, please check it out, and um, also Dana did another video just recently, I would love you all to check out too, because it's very relevant to this interview with Laura, but Dana can tell you about that video at the end uh, of the show, and um, yeah, you know, I'm just remembering something, Laura, that you asked us to um, ask you about, and that was, you shared with us the very, I think it was the very day of your deliverance, or the day before your deliverance, um, Dana and I obviously were praying for you because we knew that sometimes something, you know, can um, flare up a bit to try and put you off the deliverance and um, we were praying for you that you would still go ahead with it, that nothing spooky would put you off. So you um, told Dana and I that just before your deliverance you were over at, at your aunt's house and um, obviously Dana and I were, were praying for you because we know from experience sometimes before a deliverance the demons will try to put the person off, uh, they'll try to spook the person out, and um, what, what happened to you was that your your aunt saw your eyes turn black. 
Yes, well, we were actually talking about this, and um, I, she didn't tell me this, but she must have told my brother when Gary got there, and Gary had told me that night, and I was like, oh, wow, I, I was just really shocked, because last time I saw my daughter, her eyes were as black as black could be. They, it was not my daughter that night, that's all I can say, it was not my daughter. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I, I think it's important that folks realise that um, this is a very real phenomenon. It's not something we could make up. So, you know, for Laura's eyes to turn black and her aunt to actually see it, that, you know, that's real phenomena. You can't make this, this type of thing up. You know, and you mentioned, Dana, about people whose personality can change even, or they can become aggressive and so on um, during possession. And uh, could, could you mention, you know, a little about that video you, you recently produced, Flirting with Demon Possession, because it's just so relevant to this interview as well. Uh, yes, Laura. Um, uh, the show I just did recently, it was about how uh, our involvement with the paranormal can actually affect us. The title of the show is Flirting with Flirting with Demon Possession, um, which is actually a ghost hunter's reality. Uh, when we're involved in these investigations, which includes divination practices and necromancy, you know, familiar uh, com consulting familiar spirits, in which all these things involved interaction and communication with demonic spirits, uh, which in turn opens us up to demonic activity and influence in our lives. You know, um, not only do these spirits begin to haunt us in a paranormal way, but they start affecting us by overcoming us with their influences in areas of our personalities, you know, where we're the weakest at. Um, you know, a lot of people uh, will show signs of anger issues that they didn't really have before. Um, and when I say anger, you know, everybody gets angry sometimes. But I mean where it becomes a problem. And usually... Uh, to the point that it causes family problems or marital problems. Um, but they have, like, anger issues. It could be depression, uh, different types of addictions, you know, uh, drug or alcohol abuse, uh, marital problems, strange thoughts about hurting other people or even hearing voices telling them to do so. But on this video that I did, I showed examples of, uh, it was video clips of, the different paranormal groups when they're out doing these investigations, how suddenly they feel like they're being taken over by a spirit and they'll try to attack someone or they'll feel a, a you know, the urge to do that. They just become angry and like they want to attack someone. Well, I've, I've seen that happen and I have uh, witnessed it a lot on on TV and I, I know that we're not supposed to believe everything we see on TV, but when you've experienced yourself and you've seen other people do it personally, then you know that there's, there's some truth to it, you know, um, but these spirits do these things and it's like they, you know, people do become possessed. And like you said, Laura, before, when you're open up to these things and you're interacting with them and you're asking questions and you're you're becoming an open vessel for them, um, you know, like when people hold the uh, dowsing rods, I'll just say, and they're asking questions, their hands move. Well, they they're inviting that spirit to come through them, you know, and, and there's no demon that's going to turn that opportunity down, you know, and when they come through. Uh, they manifest whenever they feel like it. And you know, a lot of people think that once they walk away from the investigation and they say their protection prayers that it's over with and they're okay. But no. the truth of the matter is these demons do follow us home. You know, um, they don't just stay there at the residence where, you know, the person was doing the ghost hunt. They do follow us home. And there is no protection uh, prayer, I'm sorry, prayers of protection that we can do if we're involved in these things, that's part of, uh, that it goes along with the territory, you know, and when, we, when we're doing these things, we're leaving God's umbrella of protection, and, you know, he tells us, he warns us not to do these things, and it's for our own good, 
you know, but uh, a lot of people think, you know, that God's trying to keep them from something good when in reality he's not. He's only trying to warn us because he loves us and, and because it can harm us. But on the, on the video, I, di I did show some examples of people during investigations where they were trying to attack someone and not be in their right mind. And then it would just kind of stop. But there are people, like I said, it doesn't just happen there. They go home and then they get those thoughts or they start, you know, lashing out at their spouses, start, you know, uh, physically abusing their spouses. I'm not saying it's always a case, but it does happen. And, it, and it's actually very common. But, um, you know, and, and I believe that had a lot to do with even Mark Constantino's case. I really do, because how open he was to these spirits, um, you know, listening to EVPs, um, a lot of EVPs, and communicating with these spirits and everything, you know, he was he was wide open for this to happen, you know, sadly. Yeah, uh, and especially because just, I think it was just three weeks before him and Debbie's death, um, they had been to that so-called demon house with, with Zach Baggins and, and the team um, that was a particularly demonised uh, property. So yeah. that certainly would yeah. have had an impact yes. um, as well. And again, you know, we're not uh, bashing Zach Baggins and his team. Right. Dana's an ex-ghost hunter, I'm an ex-spiritualist. We know, uh, you know, the, the intrigue of all that type of thing. We used to do it ourselves, but we discovered hey guys, it's actually all demons and it is not a good thing at all. Um, and we're only sharing these, these stories to, to try and warn folks and, and ask you to turn to Jesus um, instead. Yes. You know, so, so, so Laura, you know, what would you say to folks listening who are ghost hunters or there may be mediums or, or call themselves channelers or light workers and so on, anybody who is talking to so-called spirits of the dead, they think it's dead, they think it's spirit based and so on, what would you tell them from your own experience? Laura, what would you say to any ghost hunters or mediums who think that they're talking to ghosts or spirit guides, what would you say to them today? No, I would say absolutely not rethink what you're doing because uh, I had no idea what was going to happen to Sam and I. Um, if, if Mark never got involved in this paranormal, there is no doubt in my mind my brother and my daughter would still be alive and I would not have lived through a living hell the last two and a half years of my life. That's yeah. Basically, no. And oh. And everybody watch this video and listen to it. And hopefully if I could keep a couple of people from getting involved, then, then that's great. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, and, and Dana and I echo that too. If uh, my mother had not been involved in it, I'm sure she wouldn't have killed herself either. Um, so that, that's us basically at the end of the show. Sorry for the interruptions, guys. We keep having audio problems. And I thank you for your persistence and patience staying with us. Those of you who think, you know, Dana and, and Laura um, are, are kind of crazy here talking about the Bible and so on, can I just share something with you? Um, I said earlier that historians have proved Jesus Christ really did live as the Bible said, he really did die on the cross, he really was resurrected. Um, but it's also interesting that the, the mother of the New Age movement, um, Madame Helena Blavatsky, famous uh, spiritualist medium of the 1800s, she actually believed Lucifer was God. Um, we have people um, even today who, for example, the, the biggest New Age a website called Spirit Science. Now they're into the New Age and they're into spiritualism and spirit contact and all that. They also feel Lucifer is God. Um, so there's an interesting link there. You know, um, people down through the ages have said that, that that all the psychic powers and so on comes from Lucifer. You know, and that he's not the angel of. of they believe he's the angel of light. But here's an interesting right. link, guys. I want you to 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 listen to. 
if you ask an ex-Satanist, now, you know, I've done a radio show for, for years, and I've been involved in, in, in helping people for years. If you ask ex-Satanists about Satan, what will they say? It's very interesting. They will say Satan really is Satan, that they discovered that, and that he pretends to still be Lucifer, the angel of light, but he really is evil, and he is... He is um, conning all the New Agers. He's conning ghost hunters to believe in that kind of stuff. So, for example, you may have heard of Antoine LaVey. He was the founder of the Church of Satan. Um, he wrote the Satanic Bible. And in his book, um, he wrote on the age of Aquarius. And, and he actually said that Satanists, quote, should reclaim New Age practices and use them in rituals dedicated to the devil where they rightfully belong. Now, he actually said that, that New Agers and ghost hunters and so on have stolen, if you like, these uh, phenomena and activity that actually belong to Satan. Um, you have, so Anton LaVey said that, um, Alistair Crowley, the, the, the Satanist who said he was the most evil man alive, he literally studied a lot of the New Age practices. He was a, a guru, if you like, of New Age practices, including the spiritualist type activities. And there was a guy who, in his book, Confessions of Alistair Crowley, even said he wanted to become Satan's chief of staff. The guy admitted he was thoroughly evil. And there you are, they're basically saying that the stuff that the New Agers do, that the ghost hunters do, is actually all demonic stuff. Yeah. It, they're being deceived by it. And, you know, I, I think most of you probably will have heard of that quote that some philosopher said. Um, and he said, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he doesn't exist. Now, that's a philosopher's quote that you've probably seen in movies down through the years. So, you know, a lot of the New Agers and ghost hunters, as I say, believe that Lucifer is God. He's the source of, of psychic powers. Um, you know, and that he's still this angel of light. But we have proof, we have evidence that, hey guys, actually the Bible is true. Lucifer, yeah, he was the angel of light, but he fell, he became Satan, he is evil. Right. And all, all his demons as masters of disguise have deceived precious, precious people, like ghost hunters and, and all of them, precious people, to believe in these lies. And yeah, sometimes they will destroy their life, Sometimes they won't, like, in such tragic ways, but at the end of the day, they want those people's souls because they do not want people to realize Jesus Christ is the Savior. They do not want people to come to him for salvation uh, and go to heaven with him. And that is like, if you like, we see it, we see in the news all the time, don't we, about deceptions that happen and, you know, this person deceives that person, politicians deceive each other. This is the ultimate deception down through history that Satan and demons have got people deceived by. Laura, I want to say one other thing before we end the show. Mm -hmm. I know you had asked me privately, you and Dana, what Gary and I would say to somebody if they asked us, what do you think about us getting into the paranormal? What do you think? That's you know? what I was going to... You've took the thoughts out of my <laughs> head, Laura. That, that's exactly what I was about to ask you there. Yes, that is, because that's a very important question to both of us. I'm going to let Gary answer first. Um, my answer to that would be no. <laughs> Definitely not. No way. I mean, I think you would have to be out of your mind to want to get into that and start experiencing horrible things like uh, letting things into your life demonically. Um, definitely not. That would be my answer to that. Yes, and my answer would be same as Gary's, absolutely not, only because more, more so than Gary, I've experienced it firsthand. I lost mm -hmm. my brother. I had a major fire at my house that I know was caused uh, because of something evil, and my mm -hmm. daughter died the day, the day we came back to my house, my daughter passed away mm -hmm. unexpectedly in my arms at 33. And there is nothing I could say. I wish I could bring her back, but I can't. And I have to stop blaming myself for yes. 
taking, taking her to Virginia with me because I feel if I didn't, she still would be alive. I feel if Mark didn't get involved in this, he would still be alive. There's no doubt in both our minds about this. That was not either one of them. It wasn't. And if anybody ever wants to get back into this stuff or has a question about it, let them listen to more of your shows. Yeah. More of your shows would, would convince me. I wish I, I knew of you guys before I even went to Virginia. Mm -hmm. I never heard of you guys before. I'm so glad I came across Dana's um, one video when she was looking at the beautiful sunrise in Florida. That's mm -hmm. what made me contact her. And Laura, mm -hmm. you are just absolutely a beautiful person. And I just want to thank you personally from the bottom of my heart for having me on. Oh. Well, we're, so, we're so proud of you, Laura and Gary. We're so, so proud of you for doing this because... We know how hard it must be. Um, as I say, I lost my mother to, to suicide through this. She couldn't take it any longer, and she took her life. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we do understand, and, and we're so grateful to, to Jesus that he's connected us together. Um, and, yeah, we want to emphasise to listeners that, that we, we have tried to cover this sensitively, um, and delicately and that again none of us have um, got any um, hatred or anything like that to, to any ghost hunters at all we've actually no, no. been there we've been there and yeah. as Laura said they are lovely lovely people Dana yeah. and I will vouch for that we were once involved we totally understand that um, and we just want to reach out to folks maybe in the same position and plead with them with all our hearts to please consider what we've shared today um, and the truth about about Jesus Christ um, you know and, and Laura said she wants us to she hopes that she hopes that you guys check out our our, our other shows um, about these things so we will share our blog details in, in just a moment but before we do so um, I would like to ask Dana to pray for for you, Laura and and Gary, and bless you both. Um, it, it's been lovely getting to know you th th these last few weeks. Um, and again, thank you so much for coming on the show today. You're more than welcome. And thank you very much for having us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. You're both. welcome. Yes. Dana, please, please, please go ahead, sis. Okay, Father God, I ask that you protect each one of us. I ask that you protect Laura and Gary and, and every other person in their family. And I ask you to comfort all of those that knew Mark and Debbie and Sam. And I ask that you continue to reveal the truth to Laura and Gary and to everyone else that is listening. All-powerful Father God, I ask that you stop the enemy from distracting us away from the truth. And I ask that you cancel out all the tactics of the enemy and every plan that he has against us. We speak confusion into the enemy's camp right now. We ask that the listeners will walk in love during this time and to refuse offense or strife. We believe that the enemy will not triumph in their plans against us. And I pray that their plans will be exposed and destroyed under your precious blood. We declare that we will use the word of God against the enemy. I pray that anyone listening that has not accepted Christ in their hearts, that God will put it in their hearts to do so. And I ask that anyone listening that needs your forgiveness, that you will give us your grace and mercy and forgive us all. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Dana. And, and I'd, just like amen. To amen. Pray, I'd just like to pray for the audience now. Um, you know, if, if, if any of you feel, which I thoroughly believe you will be, you know, this show has touched you. And, and if, if you believe that you were meant to listen today, we believe that too. We don't believe in spiritual coincidences. We believe in divine destiny. And if you would like to now turn away from those practices that you've been involved in, maybe you've not been involved in them, but you've watched it on TV. If you would like to turn away from that now because you recognize it's demonic and ask Jesus Christ to be your saviour or if you want to rededicate your life to Jesus afresh please say this prayer with me Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth 
I thank you that you are real. I thank you that you love me and that you want me free from all of these things and you want to give me a brand new start. You want to cleanse me. You want to cleanse my home and you want me to just experience all the good things that you have for me. Heavenly Father, I now believe Jesus Christ did die on that cross for my sins. He did rise again and he is alive today and seated with you in heaven. So Heavenly Father, I ask now that Jesus Christ will come into my life. I, I'm sorry for the mistakes, the, the, the sins I've done in my life. And Jesus, I ask you to wash me clean with your precious, precious blood. Be my Savior, be my Lord, guide me through the rest of my life. And Lord, break all of the curses that have been on my life thus far and, and begin to release the fullness of your blessings for my life and, and shower me with, with your love, with your joy and with your peace. In Jesus' precious, precious name, amen. 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 And folks, you know, if you want, you can check out my blog, Dana's blog. Uh, for example, my blog has a list of deliverance ministries on there, all around the world, actually. Even some of those guys are on Facebook, and that's under my section labeled <clears throat> Contact Advice. And, you know, if you've got no one in your area, get in touch with these guys on Facebook. They'll uh, cleanse your house in, in Jesus' name over Skype. Um, if you need exorcism like Dana and I did, they'll do that for you over Skype. You know, the Bible does say that if you believe in Jesus Christ, you will cast out demons. You will heal the sick. So it's not that you've got to have, oh, you know, a special gift or whatever. Jesus Christ is with you. He wants everyone That's to right. be free so, um, you know, Dana, uh, uh, it comes to mind that, that Dana used to be um, a, a ghost hunter. And jokingly, I say, Dana Emmanuel from ghost hunter to demon buster. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's a good name for her. And, you know, Dana, <laughs> Dana told us that she used to, she used to love the, the um, you know, that, that film. What's it called? Uh, Ghost, Ghostbusters, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. used to love that film, and you had a tattoo on, on your arm, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and back in the day when me and my mum were into all, that was my most favourite film as well. So yeah. <laughs> you can understand why. <laughs> but, um, Dana, please go ahead, sis, and share with guys your YouTube channel and blog. I know that you're changing the name of it, but, but yes. go ahead and share that. Yes, uh, what, I'm, what the ministry name is, uh, is Spiritual Realities, and my blog website is www.exposingtheenemy.com, except it starts with the X at the beginning of it. Um, and then I have my uh, YouTube channel, which is uh, youtube.com slash forward slash um, exposing the enemy. So um, I will be updating as I change my name on my uh, blog site and as well. I think I'm going to, um, it'll be different. It'll be with my new name, but it will redirect, you know, when they put in exposingtheenemy.com. Sure. Awesome. And, you know, um, guys, my, my blog is ourspiritualquest.com and my YouTube is Laura Maxwell X spiritist i have got a whole lot of testimonies on there yes. my own tv shows my own radio shows that have been worldwide but a whole lot of testimonies there of other people ex-ghost hunters ex-witches ex-wiccans ex-satanists who all discovered their so-called spirits were demonic and they got free when they came to jesus christ so so do check that out guys and just before we end um there's a friend of ours we'd like to recommend and that is mark Honeman. Yes. And Mark Honeman has has been involved in this for, for many, many years. And he wrote a fantastic book, which is called Seeing Ghosts Through God's Eyes, which you can find on his Facebook page of that title. But you can also find interviews I did with Mark oh, a couple of years ago. And there's about a dozen interviews with us on there. So, hey, if you can't afford a book, please go there and listen um, to those interviews. We're not trying to sell a book, by, by the way. I'm just saying it happens to be, I believe, one of the best books exposing the 
this so-called ghost phenomena that yes. I have ever personally read. I believe he's a worldwide expert on that particular deception. Yes. Lastly, just before we go, um, Dana and I want to share, for those of you who don't know that this is our YouTube radio show, but Dana and I will be on Eternal Radio later in the year. Um, I used to have a show on there. I'll be going back on there, and this time Dana will be joining me as our co-host. So please tune into that, guys, um, if you want. Absolutely. All right. Yes. Again, thank you so much. And Laura, thank you for traveling that 24-hour journey to get to Gary's house to actually come on the show with us today. And you're having a flight back home, and, and we just pray you have a safe and pleasant flight back home. Thank you, and I'm just honored that you had us on your show. Honored, very honored. Oh, we were honored to have you on. Well, Absolutely. it goes both ways. Yeah, it goes both ways. And I wouldn't, I couldn't think of anybody better to yeah. um, actually try to get our story sure out to way. other than you. Yeah, so. yeah. All I saw right. some of you know, and, and people have been asking you for three years, and 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 oh, it just yes. wasn't. It just wasn't God's timing yet for you to yeah. share, and, and now it's just been a divine appointment that, that us to meet you and, and Gary, and then, um, yep, we're just so blessed that you've been on. And listen, guys, have a good day, and we'll speak to you again soon. We will. Okay. Thank you. Thank you once bye. again. Bye, Dana. Thank have you. a nice day. Bye, bye Dana. Dana. Okay. And bye, Laura. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, you guys. Bye-bye. 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 For more on the topics covered in these programs, please go to OurSpiritualQuest.com. Thank you for listening.